Aha! I have done it! Behold the absolute power of Maroka of Bradford! Master of Mumble, you are bound to me, troll! Trifle in Britain, your arrogance will be your undoing! But I'm in charge of you! No! You faith Jax! You faith Jax! Uh, Goblin Lord of the Turkey Rafter! You faith Jax! You faith Jax! Goblin Lord of the Turkey 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 Jax! Jax! You faith Jax! For Thanksgiving! Jax! Jax! You faith Jax! Thanksgiving! Tur Turkey! Tur Turkey! Turkey, tur, turkey, tur, tur, turkey, turkey, drax, jacks, turkey, jacks, turkey, jacks, and ah ha 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 ha. Now they talk's valiant a parody of You Face Draxes by Mr. Voltron. Oh right, I was I was thinking it was an original composition here. Yeah. No. And also, I found out that a the name for a group of turkeys is a rafter. So go me. Well, that's the, I'm sure that's relevant yes. to everything. The, the, the legend of Jax, man. Okay. The legend of Jax may not be suppressed. You may try to, cens- to censor the legacy of Jax, but, but I will continue to fight until my dying breath. A group of turkeys is called a rafter. It is indeed. You're not even making that up. Nope. Nope. I, I, I googled that. I put effort into this intro. Excellent. Well, I... I... I still don't know why groups of things are called the things that they are, and that's a really weird one. What, why? Are I, I think that, for the most part, it's like a bunch of like, like I, I don't think that like rafter would be a term that you would use in like a scientific paper talking about turkey. I think most of like your old, your old English country club gentlemen kind of people were just like, hey, let's do something one day. We're out for a stroll in the woods. Let's call these people rafter because that would be weird, right? And then just like sort of they just call it that. So I, I don't think like. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting way to like talking about like how the way, way language develops because in a way like I think that it, there might be a good argument for, like Rafter not being for the English language because it's just so arbitrary and dumb but I don't know. It's not, I don't know. Yay, Joy. So you're saying the reason collective nouns exist is old English gentlemen social clubs well, being well, bored I mean, and wanting to make up silly names well, for things. I mean, well, yeah, I mean like stuff like, you know, a, having a parliament of owls or a or a murder of crows, you know, like, having a murder of crows, like, it's so poetic, it's just so, like, you know, it's not really, you, you know what I mean, do you know what I mean, do you know what I mean, Well, 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 back me I, up on this, Will. I, I, Edgar Allan Poe, yeah, See, so. see, you see, I, I love Edgar Allan Poe, so, uh, yeah, Edgar Allan Poe, ah, uh, well, well, in, in case in case you would like a little bit more education on this podcast, in case we dare <laughs> veer into educational territory, I googled this. It stems from the English hunting traditions of the late Middle Ages. The fashion of a consciously developed hunting language came to England from France. France had geese? France had, presumably, Fran- yes, presumably the French must have hunted geese at some point, I, 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 I thought guess. that uh, I thought that the turkey was an American bird, because, like, famously, uh, Benjamin Franklin uh, wanted to make the national bird of America the turkey instead of the bald eagle, as it is currently. Okay. There, there is apparently one that refer, refer to humans as well. There, there is a there is a sentence of judges. You have a fighting of beggars, a melody of harpers, a gaggle of women, a dis a disworship of Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. That's quite amusing. I. Need to. I need to. I need to delve into the history of this at some point. That seems quite entertaining. Yes. Um. Well, welcome to the Bottom Mesh Podcast with gaming news, gaming accessories news, and uh, di- this worshiping Scottish people. And you butchered my intro. Damn it. We're four minutes in, and I should probably have done an intro by now. But hey, yes. Welcome to the Bottom Mesh Podcast. We're going to be here for t- about two hours talking about video games and video game accessories. That's the intro. It was like two hours and 40 minutes last time. Last time. That was a ridiculous amount of video games we had last week, and I don't know why. Dude, that just that just kept going. Those games and, never and, ended. Uh, Let us... Segways. There were segways. And declarations of independence. That's why it took so long. They I may have contributed. Many times. There were much independences declared. 
And that still doesn't make it count. We still own America. We still believe much we do like, anyway. <laughs> much like uh, East Sweden declared its independence. Is that a segue? Yes. Weirta, what is your opinion on the independence of Weir of East Sweden? Yeah, we did have the independence from Russia, though, not Sweden. Oh. Okay. So th- I misunderstood history. Um, would you like to inform the people on just how r- wrong I am? Um, no, of course, history isn't isn't my strongest suit. Oh, okay. Uh, that leads us into our special guest <laughs> this week. Our special guest being the person we've talked about on many occasions but never been able to pronounce the name of... Okay, now, now this is what we're going to do, okay? We're each going to try to give our best effort to um, do the uh, to, to do to do like uh, the the name to pronounce the name and at okay. the end we're just gonna say the person who did it best and then she will give them um, she will improvise something to give them she can give us all scores out of ten yeah do, do that yeah. okay and and the, and the person who um, wins can be the new owner of the button match podcast <laughs> is this because you've been practicing it. Um, well, p- possibly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on, Will. Can I even see this written down anywhere? <laughs> no, no, you can't. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> from memory, then, from talking oh, 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 over no, and no, over. No, no, I, no, 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 I will put it in the chat. I did it already. Oh, see, okay. see, it's, it's there. Look at the chat. Okay, now get, take right. a moment, okay. process it, take, draw on your Finnish heritage. <laughs> <laughs> Is it vitamin Timuntaja? Okay, and try try to do it again. You do it now, Maroka, but do it more seriously, maybe? I was going to say, I think that's how I would have first... That's probably how I first pronounced it when I first saw it. You have pronounced it on many occasions with the wuh sound rather than the v sound, so... I guess that would be, and I guess the J is more of a silent thing, silent thing so... Vitamin muntia. Maybe. Weirta Mitta Muntaya. Okay. I, I just listened to the video where Weirta. Uh, you literally listen to her pronounce her own name. Which is <laughs> That's probably, cheating. Which is. Well, well, she may choose to deduct points for that if she so desires. <laughs> but okay, no, I, I will just, you know, try to do it my best effort. Okay. Weirta <clears throat> Mitta Muntaya. Yeah, but you were cheating there. <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean like it's it's better to have like a really good cheat, really bad failure, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Okay, so so, so, so who wins? Who wins? Scores out of ten. Me, please so, say it's me. Say it's me. A for effort for everyone because I know it's horrible to try to say when Finnish isn't your native language. <laughs> Yay, democracy! But, I feel like I was cheated here, but I suppose <laughs> I'm a cheater, so it all comes around in the end. Yeah. Um, scores out of. Ten. I say maybe five out of ten for Will, <laughs> and seven for Maroka. Okay. And eight, nine to Tolkas. But you were Yay! cheating, so oh. I'm not sure. How many points do you deduct? What, what for is the cheating? penalty? Yes. Um, I don't know. Maybe something like burning in hell or something. Okay. <laughs> so, so you win the contest and you've got the podcast, but you burn in burn in the eternal fires of hell for it. Um, is this a worthy we- trade off, Tolkus? Well, there, there's nothing fiery about hell. It's mushroom biome. There's mycelium, the unholy ones to be tormented by the moods of the unholy ones. There's nothing fire about that. I suppose metaphorical fire in the soul. I don't know. I I I, I feel like this is hard. Harsh, bad. It's the fire within you. I. It comes oh. from the inside. And then it burns. I. Oh, but so I suppose we could say that. So like, I lo- I I won the butt match podcast, but I lost all sense of joy that I may have for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And I, and I say that this is a fair exchange, and I'm happy with this. Thank you, Weirta. Woo! I own the podcast! Woo! I, all things considered, I thought you'd already kind of claimed it as your own anyway, so... Well, well I mean... But all I, you I, really have, all past, you've really gained out people, of this is losing your joy. I've had people, you know, <laughs> challenge my leadership. I just wanted to, you know, <laughs> confirm once and for all that I... This is my podcast, and that if anyone has a problem with that, they have to take it up with Weirta Bittamuntaya. 
All right, host, lead on. Or as she is perhaps for knowing. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so what are we talking about this week, podcast host? Oh, um, this is exactly. Oh, UHC is supposed to go out at this moment, so I, I was about to put out UHC, but fine. Um, this week, um, we are going to be talking about uh, games and gaming releases and accessories. And um, probably I'll probably bring up the Declaration of Independence at some point, and everyone will yell at me a lot. Yep. And um, first of all, we will have um, Roka. No, 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 no. Weirta, Weirta, uh, Weirta Metamuntaya. What have you played this fine week? Okay, well, this this list is very short because I just watch other people play games, as you all know. Fair but enough. Yeah, um, the solitaire, the basic Windows one that you get with the operating system. That's like always the best game to play when okay, you're bored. Okay, Im- important, important distinction. Which version? Uh, are, are we talking Windows? Windows, t- Windows 7 one. Okay, I, I was wondering if you had the Windows 10 version with microtransactions in it. <laughs> I, I think your UHC uh, thumbnail failed, by the way. Hmm? Why? I think your UHC thumbnail, like, isn't. I, I, didn't, I, didn't do, I didn't do a thumbnail. Okay, good talk, good talk. Go on, weird <laughs> Not yet, anyway. I will do once we finish doing this, but yeah. Yeah, and the other game I've been playing is Town of Salem, but I don't really have anything to say about that either. It's on video, though, but not, well, not, well. not from me, but from other people. Well, 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 tell how much, you know, you in, in the town of Salem, you know, there was a certain uh, very handsome American that, like, really dazzled Azura? you. <laughs> <laughs> I, fine, I guess. Sorry. You just you... got wrecked, yo. <laughs> you are Whoa. all beautiful inside. Whoa, Matt in the hat, you wish the thumbnail is brilliant. I, I like that. That is stylism. Fair enough. I am not subscribed to him, so I don't know what that looks like. Uh, I like him. I like him. They had his good quality content. Uh, um, although, hey, he, he gave my name as Talk of the Valiant. People always do that. They, like, capitalize the T and the V in Talk of the Valiant. It's, uh, I mean, it probably makes sense and it's better that way. I don't even know. And and he didn't capitalize the H in hat. It's like that in the but lowercase hat. You get some consistent naming conventions. Yeah. I don't even know what you're complaining about here, but okay. Yeah, you, I, yeah, go, ignore me. Also, I will say Matt in the Hat's got an awful URL I can never remember because it's so backwards. Hat Matt Games. Yeah, I know. Matt in the Hat has Hat Matt as a URL, what? Well, I, um, that, that URL was, has been shouted out in this very podcast. I, I always I always type in ha- Matt Hat Games, and it was always like, nope, don't know what that is. URL 404 not found. Every time without fail. Oh, well. I, I, alas. But yeah, Matt in the Hat, his, his content isn't the uh, most spectacular, and I think that because of that, he hasn't even enjoyed as much success as I have. But I think that what he is doing, that he has very good, solid content, and he is going to get big eventually, not through having any big viral videos, although he does have his one giant viral videos, but just through, you know, solidly plodding his way, trudging his way into enlightenment. Cool. Noted. This is completely irrelevant to most things that are going on and talking is, about, I think. This is possibly the uh, most distracted episode of the Bad Mesh podcast so far, but I apologize for interrupting. I will, not, I will now hush for a long time. Okay. Uh, Virta, Virta, whatever we just uh, did, your name was. Um, yes, how's Town of Salem going for you? I, I usually lose, but it's fun to play. Okay, fair enough. I, I, I ne- I can't get into it. I tried, I tried, I can't. Which is why I did like two episodes with the rest of the guys at the start, and then I was like, ah, uh, this is just, I don't know. It, it, yeah. I feel like it just feels overcomplicated for me. It's, it's it's like they took a really simple game and then learned, just kept piling on rules and rules and rules until there was too much, and I don't like it anymore. Yeah, I don't. Me. Personally, I don't like uh, Town of Steel myself. I only do it just because like I like to hang out with my friends. Really, peer pressure, basically. But but yeah, I mean, if if it, if I I would if if the Strangelanders were not doing Town of Steel, then I would never play 
that game ever again. Like, I mean, I, I, I just, I don't hate, hate it, but it's just a bit bleh for me. Okay, fair enough. Wait, I've gone back to hosting. You should be hosting this thing, damn it. Um, I'm, I'm trying to add all the URLs of all the videos to the subreddit link. It's, I'm, I'm trying to be organized. But, um, fine. So, uh, Weirta, um, dispense a final, uh, pearl of wisdom unto us, your, your loving but ill, ill-advised and ignominious brethren. Um. Boobies. Good talk. Um, Can well, I... what, what, what have you been playing this week? And I... does it start with an S and end in an Oma? It does. I I played a snippet of Soma, uh, which is the the one that's by the guys that made uh, Amnesia. I forgot Amnesia. That's a terrible pun. Why? Um. So it's basically like if Amnesia had a baby with Bioshock and Dead Space. Excellent. I can't even mentally picture that one. So you're um, basically in an un underwater facility. There's robots that I think are trying to kill me, but I haven't met them yet. So that's pretty much where I'm at. Really atmospheric. Um, it's not dialogue heavy, but you know you get you get the story through interacting with machines and little audio tapes. Uh, and so far, it looks like there's some kind of organic mech uh, soup that's turning all the robots evil. Okay, interesting. Sounds more interesting than Amnesia ever did to me, to be honest. Yeah. I, I like how you, how you ended with an R, you know? Amnesia. Yes, that's how you pronounce it, you it, it's Philistine. Amnesia. <laughs> ah, ah, amnesia. Not the amnesia. It's not in an, an, an ER. That's like how you how you say, like, town centrist and, like, being, like, town centra. We foreigners, we only made your language. Yeah, it's our language, <laughs> damn it. Ugh, ugh. Well, we, we are to... We are to, we are to do this too, man. You're all conspiring against me. I don't like it. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of people playing Soma on the YouTube, but it's my usual, my usual kind of knee-jerk reaction of, ah, oh, it's horror. I don't want any part of this horror nonsense. That is not my genre. I won't touch mm. it. I th I think you would appreciate uh, Layers of Fear because it's 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 not one where you have to face any enemies. It's just all visual. It's all exploratory. Okay. But I expect I'll probably have to run away from things in in Soma. Right. Okay. I'm not. I'm not because I played Layers of Fear, and that's probably the first exploratory horror game I've ever played, and I think that's a great concept. Um, it's in fact it filled the hole that I didn't get to play PT. Uh, the the Silent Hill. Yeah, yeah, the playable demo. teaser thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I and that that really filled the the emptiness that I didn't get to play that game. So. I, I'm hoping that this becomes a thing and that, you know, more games like this. Okay, yeah, it sounds better than what I normally think of in horror, so I, I, I guess I need to give something a go at some point and try and decide to try and appreciate things outside of my normal <laughs> comfort zone, I guess, is what it would be. Well, right, right now in summer, I can't see any mechanic to either attack or defend myself so running might be the only option uh, however i'm hoping i don't have to run because i hate being chased in horror games right yeah uh, especially in a first person horror game where you can't look behind you right where looking yeah. behind you could be very detrimental i was like, that was kind of they did that not that i played a lot of amnesia but i'd play some amnesia most of the horror -y bits was just being chased by weird things that you couldn't quite make out yeah, because you, you had that whole sanity thing where you had to light candles and stuff. And... I don't know if I remember that mechanic. Oh, I, I, that only vaguely rings a bell, to be honest. Yeah, there, there was some kind of madness level, and uh, that I don't think that's in summer, fortunately. I don't mind sanity if it's done well, but I, I, 
I don't, mm. don't know if I went deep enough into that to see kind of how well that played out. Um, I just kind of, me, I like, me I like neither, the, to be honest. But I like the Eternal Darkness sanity system. Yeah, that, even, that was even a brilliant if it kind game. of only only if it even even though it kind of only really catches you out once. But hey, yeah, it 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 was good for that once. Yeah. It was like ah, you got me. That was quite well played. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. And Yahtzee did a lot of very similar kind of things in the Consuming Shadow, which again I quite appreciate. Those there's looks really those, interesting, but I, they I caught me out. Yet to pick that up. I you 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 like your uh, Lovecraftian stuff, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I I mean, obviously the game looks like complete ass, but <laughs> I feel like you might appreciate it. Yeah. It's got the Lovecraftian horror thing going on. It's got some cool sanity effects. Um, I don't know what you're like with roguelikes. Are you into roguelikes? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, there's, a, there's a lot of, some roguelike -y stuff going on in there. What's it called again? Uh, the Consuming Shadow. Right, I may have to just pick that up. I don't think it was terribly expensive. Yeah, I, I'm happy to recommend that one. I think it was a pretty good game. I enjoyed that. Which is weird because it's, well, yeah, it's horror, but... Hey, mm. you, if, I, if I say a horror game's good, you know it's got to be pretty reasonable. Yeah. So yeah, horror games I have appreciated. Eternal Darkness, The Consuming Shadow, and for some bizarre reason, the Charnel House trilogy. Which that that one that one I don't know, that one was very pleasantly surprising. I don't think I've ever even heard of that. I I I was sent it as a review a few months back now, mm. and it was what it was one of those kind of quiet weeks where I was like, I need to look at something on my channel and there was a Steam key there, and I was like, okay, well, let's have a look at that. I don't do horror. This is going to be a train wreck for me, and I'm going to I'm going to utterly slate it, I think, probably. <laughs> but I'm going to have to disclaim, like, remember here, guys, I hate horror, but I'm going to look at this horror <laughs> game. And then at the end of it, I was like, you know what? I really enjoyed this. <laughs> it was just, it was, it was kind of, it was just really creepy, atmospheric kind of horror with lots of weirdness going on. Mm. It, it still kind of never... I think my main issue with the genre, and I think I mentioned this in the video as well, is that it doesn't really ever explain anything, which I think a lot of horror does, and it's, it's that's something I dislike. It's like, I, I like... I'm a man who likes science fiction, and in science mm. fiction, they explain everything. If some, if there's some weird technology or strange, unexplainable phenomenon, they, they, will, they, they will tell you the scientific reasoning or technologies behind it, or at least some sort of basis for why the weird thing exists. Yeah. In horror, it's like, oh, this room has suddenly turned into blood. <laughs> it's like, why has the room suddenly turned into blood? Who knows? It's horror. Magic, paranormal, <laughs> hand-wavy magic stuff. And, yeah, the Channel House trilogy absolutely didn't explain anything, but... I don't know. I was just, it, it was it was compelling enough for me that I was just about willing to let that go. Just <laughs> I was towing a fine line. I mean, oh, I, I, I I think the again with the Eternal Darkness and uh, Consuming Shadow, I'm kind of, a lot of that you're willing to forgive because it's Elder Gods. They right. have incredible cosmic powers. Yes, that's why everything's screwy and mutated and horrifying. Gods are unleashing their evil, unspeakable, unknowable wrath upon the lands. That's the reasoning there, and I'm, I can I can kind of I, kinda, I can work with that. I don't know. I think if it's a good atmosphere and and an enjoyable game, you can suspend your disbelief for just about anything. Uh, I guess I'm not necessarily convinced about that one. <laughs> I don't know, like Silent Hill, the whole basis of Silent Hill is you don't know what the what the frack's going on. It's, it's it never explains itself. It never apologizes for never explaining itself. See, I'm not convinced I would appreciate that. I don't. I don't think I would. I, th I think I'd be going. Well, well, why is this so messed up? Please explain. I want. I want to know. I need. I need. I need to know these things. I like to know things. I don't like not knowing things. This is why the first thing I did on this podcast was Google the origins of collective nouns. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like suddenly we're talking about them. I'm like, well, now I need to know why there are collective nouns because some weird middle-aged hunters from France decided that that was a good idea is the reasoning there. Yeah, I need to know things. 
You know, so sometimes I just need to not know things. Sometimes I need to just be taken away and have nothing make any kind of sense. To each their own, I suppose. Yes, not my bag. Not I my don't bag. think I don't think we're going to find some common ground here. No, we shall agree to disagree. Indeed, sir. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so anything else? You play anything else? I unfortunately haven't. I've been setting up my workshop in the garage for shield making and prop making. So. Well, you you, you spent a day at a significant gaming event I in the did. local area. Did you not play any games at our gaming event? I did. No, I socialised. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which was entirely not the wrong. point. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I I wore my snazzy new T-shirt with with the sexy Samus on it and uh, talked to people and saw Ace cosplayers. There were there were some really good ones. Like I really appreciated the Dante and the Android Seventeen in particular. Uh, the Android Seventeen was one of the hot favorites to win yeah. the contest. Uh, Dante was, was Dante Cock-Con. won. Yeah, Dante was excellent, but he's worn that one before, so we weren't giving him the prize twice for oh. the same costume. <laughs> I didn't know that. that no, that's, that's, one of, that's one of our unspoken rules of the judges there. We never tell people that, but we like, we like to encourage people to do original stuff. So yeah. if, you've, if you've been at something before, and as particularly if you've been at something before and won a prize, we tend not to give you it again. So if you're like, hey, I won, I won cosplay last time, and you turn up in the same thing next time, no, we're going to give it to someone else. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. I wouldn't expect any luck. But I think the first the first thing that I am making in this workshop is the kale hammer from Bastion. So I thought maybe people might appreciate that. Hey, uh, Will, could you build me a uh, life size statue of Neil? <laughs> I, I think so. What, what would be the medium? What would I have to make it out of? Anything. Quartz. quartz. Anything. <laughs> yes, quartz. Oh, I don't think uh, you can put quartz through a bandsaw. Can you smelt uh, quartz? <laughs> well. You like you build the quartz around the statue. Of I don't know. Doom. Huh? Can you imagine having a, a real life Keplite temple? That'd be so cool. You know, it's highly sure I understand what a Keplite is. That that actually that actually could be a thing. Like, if I ever get huge on YouTube with like a million subscribers, like I could put my fortune to use building a real life temple to Neil. Okay, now now I have a new goal in life. I think that's maybe how you should build your subscriber base via cult. <laughs> that, it's, have, it's a novel method I'll give you that <laughs> I, I have in fact that has in fact been like my only method of trying to build my subscriber base yes although I, I, one might argue that in many ways that's how PewDiePie did it but hey <laughs> <laughs> yeah although I, I believe that a uh, certain uh, member in this conversation they are uh, a filthy pastafarian heathen <laughs> yeah I think that implies me. <laughs> I had a feeling he might be talking about you, because um, I, re- I mean IRL. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely in favor of the the, fl- uh, the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. In <laughs> in the Strange Lands, I try to stay out of into into religion politicking. You 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 do not you 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 desecrate autograph book. <laughs> That was before the religion even existed. The religion hadn't been established. This is a, this is prehistory at this point. Yeah, well, I mean, you probably didn't even know my name, but like, you should have sensed <laughs> something, you know? Because the spiritual side of you should have come up and spoken. I'm but, a but, pirate. I'm not spiritual. Yeah, well, I'm I'm very I'm very I, I'm mad at you, Maroka. You stole my quartz, man. You stole my quartz. <laughs> well, that was in a different timeline. Ugh. Oh, uh, but yeah, so, so but yeah, Weird is a a, a a crazy pastor finger, so all the pastorianisms are, are, are too. <laughs> the the podcast host said it is so, so it must be so. But then again, Weird was the one that made me the podcast host. But then again, I mean, I, she's already taken away all happiness and all joy and all purpose for me to go on living this. Dull, dreary, miserable life. What else can she do to me? What else can you do to me, Weirta? <laughs> well, there was a pineapple discussion yesterday, but we won't go there. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't actually know what that was. No? But I, I'm sure I assume that this this stems from Little Nicky, possibly. I have no idea what <laughs> it, people are talking about. It was during the Town of Salem recording. Oh, oh, the uh, the, the the potato. Yeah, potato. the pineapple. That um, I, I think it was a potato. That uh, there's a 
evil plan to uh, replace my mouth with a potato so I can't talk. This seems like it could be a significant upgrade. Will, could you engineer that in some way? I... I... In the bouncer, maybe? Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you get on with that. <laughs> but yeah. I'm, I'm glad we had this conversation. Yeah, okay. Create the past uh, fangirl, re represent. Cool. Right. Podcast host, would you like to move the discussion on, as is your hosting oh, duty? Oh, 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 <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Um, 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 uh, YouTube.com slash Bottom Mesh Empire. What have you been doing this week in your That's world? That's not my name. Yeah, that is. That, I, that's I don't, my name is more than a URL, damn well, it. I mean, that, that's a lot of the indie dev you know, email, you know, they're just like, hey, Bud Mesh Empire, this is my game. You want to play the game? See? You, see? you, you I, know what? That video I put out a few months back, I think that's actually gained some traction because I actually do get a surprising amount of them actually email me as Maroka now. I actually get a surprising amount of email, and all of a sudden that puts them all on equal footing with each other. So now everybody's actually referring to me by name, so I can't go, oh, well, those guys know my name. This guy didn't, so I won't bother. Now no. it's like, oh, now I'm getting five emails a day that say, dear John or dear Maroka, and I was like, ah, great. I, I, now, now I've got to ignore people who've actually done the research. Wonderful. <laughs> this is, this I have changed nothing. This reminds me of like when I first joined Strangelands, I was like looking at all the Strangelands channels and just like trying to make sense of all the weird people that I didn't know. It's like you and Maud like sound identical, and like what? you have like a no. name called Button Mash, and like I was just like what 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 I I was so confused. I was like, is this Maud on another on another channel? Is this like a Button Mash? Where where is Morocco? Where's the Morocco channel? What what is Button Mash? Am I supposed to understand what this is? What is the universe? Am I Am I alive? Am I dead? Neil is God. Neil is life. Neil is everything. I, I have always and then felt... Capitalism. And then, thus, capitalism was born. I always kind of felt like my channel wasn't that complicated, you know? It's... Button Mash is the brand, and no, I'm, I'm just, uh, Maroka is the person who makes the videos. I mean, in, in the... The brand doesn't have to be a person. I know on YouTube most people are, but it's like the guy who owns Burger King isn't Mr. Burger King, or the... <laughs> Other other corporations are available, but you know, um, yeah, most my, brands my are not the like name burger. of the person who runs the thing. My last name is uh, pronounced like burger, so if I ever become the CEO of Burger King, I will in fact be the Burger King. But that, that, would, that would be surprisingly appropriate. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, um, you should aspire to own some sort of burger chain in your lifetime. <laughs> yes. Yeah, some well, that can be a strange land thing. Although, you could own yeah. Good Burger. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Good talk. And then you can say, um, hello, Good but, Burger. Hello, welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am indeed a very good burger, and uh, boy, am I sexy. But um, I, I would like to note that in the immortal words of uh, a certain Master of Darkness, 1982, I am described as, quote, the hyper idiot. <laughs> and, you know, that, that is my sort of my persona. And I, I strive to uphold to that uh, bottom mesh empire or no button mesh empire what have you been doing this week uh me i i i went to this thing this little thing in the local area uh called button mash and i i played aladdin on the mega drive pretty cool and i got to like level seven ish i thought i don't remember there being so many really hard levels so early <laughs> on i thought the i thought the bit where you're kind of like inside the genie's lamp was reasonably early on in the game no it turns out you got to go, go through loads of really crazy evil hellfire levels to get to the level w which plays the music never had a friend like me which is all i wanted out of life you know <laughs> i just wanted a midi version of friend like me to play and i didn't get that because there was some crazy hellstorm fire thing which i suppose yeah um that's the cave of wonders collapses before they uh you know, end up trapped in the lamp or whatever, or did they get trapped in the lamp? I don't remember if they got trapped in the lamp. If for some reason the game takes you into the lamp, at any rate. Uh, but yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta run away from a giant wall of lava that will consume all before you do that. That's not fun. Uh, so yeah, that would, that, that, that was Aladdin. That ended poorly. <laughs> I played Rock Band. We we did we did the Power of Love and of course. we did. The Eric Cartman's rendition of Poker Face, which was a lot of fun, I gotta be honest. 
And then they played Poker Face on the radio at work today, and I couldn't keep a straight face. Because <laughs> all I could hear was Cartman in my head going, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Which is nice. just perfect. <laughs> and we also played... What else do we... Oh, Poison. Poison. We played Poison. That was... That, those are the three songs I played on Rock Band. And I guess at the next event we'll have Rock Band 4. Woo! Get hype. Hype, 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 hype. Oh, and I played Pokemon Guess Who. Which how, was fun. How, and, like, how many Pokemon are there in Pokemon Guess Who? How, like, how, what does it go up to? Or is there just a random selection? There's a random selection from the first four generations. So, there are literally... A, it's a board of... I think... How, how big is the board? It's it's standard guess who-ish size. So like 30-odd? So th yeah, somewhere in that region, yeah. Somewhere around 30, okay. 30 tiles. And of them, I think only five are Gen 1. Wow. I, I would suck at this game. I know, we did. Me <laughs> and Michael and Danny played games, and we're all like... I, I, I'm not sure Michael's played anything more than Gen 1. I played Gen 2, at least. I don't know what Danny's played, but... Yeah, we're all like... Um, is it green? No, Do you okay. Like the same sets, or does each player have a different set? They're the same sets. Oh, otherwise, that's, it wouldn't that's work. That's okay. how Guess Who works. Because... Could have a, an entirely different set because you're not, you don't, you both don't have the same Pokemon. Uh, I suppose you could. That's kind of what, yeah. You'd kind of have to. They would have to have their board be set up with like set of tiles one, and pick mm. their Pokemon from set of tiles two, and you would have to have set of tiles two and pick your Pokemon from set of tiles one, <laughs> and be playing against each other's sets. Yeah. So you yeah. wouldn't have any point of reference and stuff. But yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. It would be weird, but you could do it, I suppose. Never mind, I'm making things complicated. You are, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, that's... Um, it's got all the lifespan you might imagine from Guess Who. Mm. We played about three games between us, and then we're like, okay, we're done. And then I came home after working for 19 hours and didn't play Herky Cheese on a live stream, unfortunately. No! Because someone didn't turn up. Some ones, in fact. Yeah, I, Some ones I, may or may not be here. I apologize. It wasn't just you. <laughs> Weirta turned up. Uh, yeah, I did. did. Yes. Yes. You, did, were you around for us streaming Renowned Explorers then? Yeah, about for a half an hour, but then I had to go to bed because I was so tired. It was like 4.30 in the morning for me, so... Fair enough. I don't blame you. I also think, it was, all things considered, I feel like that was probably a pretty low energy stream as well, because, yeah, I'd been working 19 hours and had to stay up and stream for another two. And also, Simon Parsons had been up since, like, for some reason, he'd been, I, I don't know whether it was, you know, Hopathlon related, but he'd been apparently been up even longer than me. He got up earlier in the morning than I did, and I was up pretty early for button mash. Uh, yeah, I was sort of, like, planning that for Herkichi's, like, like, 80% of the commentary would be me, and then I couldn't make it, so yeah. Well, the, the whole reason I wanted to do the group thing was I was like, I'm going to be absolutely destroyed. However, Will will probably be reasonably fresh, because he will have gone to Button Mash, but he won't have been, you know... Yeah. <laughs> ...shifting TVs and furniture all day like the rest of us. Uh, and, to yeah, fair, talk, talk, I, I can talk. At, to be fair, I was up at five in the morning for work. Okay, fair enough. I'll grant you that. But, yeah, I guess that's... That, that was my big problem, that, like, if the, the, the great blackout of 2015 happened, or uh, 0018 under the Keplite calendar, right. um, it's just, you know, there's just no internet, no wired internet, no wireless internet anywhere on campus, the whole thing entirely black, like, campus websites down, everything... And there's a, an equipment failure with the actual, like, internet dudes and, like, much of their customers in, in uh, southern Wisconsin were affected. So this was, like, not something I could do anything about. I, yeah, me, you, I you also have a fairly reasonable excuse. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well. So, yeah, me and Simon Parsons played two levels of Renowned Explorers because those levels take a while. Uh, we, did, we did the Viking level and then we did the Pirate level, obviously. We turned that one over to chat, it was like, hey, we can do weird kind of 
dark forest cultist thingy going on in Hungary, or we can do pirates. And it was like <laughs> almost entirely unanimous. It was like, do the pirates. It was like, I won't object to this. Yeah. So. I would have wanted to do the dark forest in Bulgaria. Well, but... you would have been outvoted by everybody else. <laughs> oh, well. And, and also, a certain someone forgot to give away the uh, Herkiji 3 girl power. That would only it would have been more relevant if we'd actually done Herky Cheese anyway. I suppose. How much money did you end up raising during your segment? I haven't even got a clue. Simon Parsons did all the streaming and most of the work, and I just kind of tagged along and added things to his commentary occasionally. I was I, I was kind of yeah. Um. So. So, so weird to us, the minutes you, you, you watch, you know, rank them all from on a scale of like 1 to 30 each minute. Uh, that, that's impossible to or do. Or maybe you Well, which minute that. was your favourite? Which minute was your favourite? <laughs> Let's say I the, stop talking. I'm going to say the minute 13, but I have no reasons Woo-hoo. for this. <laughs> Yay! I'm just going, in, going with it. Okay, you see, Maroka, you see, weird to enjoys you, your content. Excellent, you, thank you. You should be you should that. be humble, man, because you know it's rare people like Weirta. Weirta doesn't like Will's content. <laughs> Good point. That's Although the point. I don't, I don't have any content. That's the point. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, so that 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 was that that was Hopathlon. You'd be you need to go to speak to Simon Parsons if you want to know more about the Hopathlon things that happened because. Uh, I'll be honest, the moment that stream fin- ended, I was like, okay, now I sleep. Mm, gone. <laughs> so, that was, that was my like evening. Just like yay! It's sort of like, you were sleeping buddies! That yes. sounds a bit too weird. Yeah, huh. Uh, we're, well, we're in roughly the same time zone so y- in the world, so yes, we probably sleep at approximately the same time, Aww. and there's probably some overlap in that. In, That's if, so- yeah. Sweet, yeah, man, like, like Maroka with his little dainty head and his little dainty pillow, dreaming dreams of sugar plums, and then Weirta and Finn are the exact same thing. Are your soulmates? I, I, I will say, I, I generally kind of get the impression you don't sleep at all, Tolkus. G- generally, there is no hour of the day in which you are not <laughs> available on Skype talking to somebody about something. Yeah, I can, I can second that. <laughs> Well, well no, I I get up first thing in the morning and like America is like that should be like middle of the night at this point. It's like no, nope, he's still there to respond to any comments on 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 Skype. So later on in the morning, afternoon, actually, yeah, I suppose late morning, afternoon would kind of be sort of, you know, like five a.m. or something for him. And it was like nope, he's still there, still available to comment on anything anybody says. It's like, do you sleep, man? Please sleep. <laughs> Well, people talk to me, and I, I like to re- respond, yeah. But my theory is <laughs> that... the end uh, to sleep. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, but, but it's like Maroka had a question about UHC, and it took him more than a moment to get it answered. I mean, like, <laughs> like that would be such an inconvenience for Maroka. I mean, I have to go... Like, I can't sleep knowing that Maroka could be inconvenienced for a few minutes, you know? <laughs> um, But, yeah, what, what I, I had a thing to say. I do... Probably could, um, could just acclimatize yourself to the Greenwich Meridian. Yeah, well, you, you should. Um, yes, you <laughs> should operate on UTC plus zero. I don't know, man. Um, probably. Or, or, I mean, like, I mean, like today, like you were talking at one twenty then about UHC, and then I just happened to get home at one twenty. So then we just like commented at the exact same time randomly. Oh, but right. um, I, I had it. It came to me, and I like said something, and and okay, so it's something about me being there, and okay, so let, let's think. Like, um, what what would I? What do you think I was wanting to say, Weirta? Um, pineapple. Pineapple. Cucumber. Cucumber. Pergele. Pergele. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? The it devil. Means devil. Oh, okay. Uh, should we should we talk about some instead instead of um, fruits and fruit accessories? Let's talk about more video games. <laughs> um, uh, I played Hearthstone. Is that is yeah, that relevant yay! discussions? Oh, good. I, I played two games of Underdog Rules. 
which was the new tavern brawl, which was actually a new thing. Yep. Yep. That was, uh, I, I appreciate the meta around that. However, I didn't get two good games. I got two non games really out of that. But one of them was a victory in my favor and I got my free pack of cards and that was cool. But uh, I don't think I had enough cards. Go within the pack. I don't know. Nothing nothing noteworthy that I was like, ooh, I will remember this card and use this card. How many packs do you think you've opened so far? Uh, Less than 20, probably? I don't know. Maybe somewhere in that region. I think the average is somewhere around, like, one legendary every 20 packs. So you're, you're doing good. Okay. Oh right. I, oh, actually, I remember. Oh, I, I remember. I got a rare and an epic out of the pack, which was nice. But uh, I don't think either of them were things that I was like, "Ooh, that's the thing I will use now." Ah, how sad. Uh, but I kind of, I kind of, I, that mechanic was like, it gives you an advantage to have less health than your I enemy. Remembered, I remembered. I remembered. Cool. Okay. My the the thing that I was going to note was that I wager the the strange lands chat has probably just like doubled in length since I joined the server. It probably has. Yes. Okay, good. I'm, I'm glad that came to me. Oh, that was tormenting me. Cool. Uh, yeah, underdog rules. Um, you, 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 you get free minions at the end of each turn if, if you have less health, which was kind of, kind of interesting. And meant... Well, the, the research I did into the meta such as it was, was everyone was like, oh, everybody's playing Warlock, because, duh, you can literally drain your own health each turn. And then I, the two games I got were against a mage and a warrior. And a warrior is like really wow. bad for that because armor counts yeah, as your health yeah. within the rules. So yeah. you're literally giving yourself more health. Yeah, that's I. I, mean, I armor doesn't count as health. Uh, actually, like for example, if you had um, twenty six health and ten armor versus someone that had thirty health, you would still get the minion. It's just that having armor made it more difficult for you to take that damage. In the first place. Are you sure? Yes. It literally says in the wiki, warrior is at a disadvantage, armor counts as life for the purposes of de- determining which player receives an underdog minion. Oh. Okay, I'm wrong. I'm glad we... Okay. Um, um, okay. Um, no, no, I look stupid. Uh, <laughs> Will, Unless the wiki's Will, make wrong. Some, uh, Will, make some distracting uh, thing. Make a distract. Someone make a distraction. So, shall I talk about what I did then with my no, deck? No, someone has to make a distraction <laughs> first to, to alleviate the awkwardness of me being wrong. Pineapples. Pineapples. Okay. We are to say pineapples. Pineapples. Okay, good. Now you can go on. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I went Warlock because Warlock was apparently the obvious and only choice for everybody. And I have not got many Warlock cards, I will note. So it's like, I, I went into this, I was like, I will make a Warlock deck. And I was like... I can't make a warlock deck. There's nothing that works here. So I kind of ended up doing some weird kind of grand tournament warlock thing because like, okay, if it's, if it's all revolving around the, the, about my hero power, let's see what we can do with my hero power. So, uh, obviously, obviously we had uh, Mukla's champion went in there. Obvs. I mean, I'm trying to drain my health to get more minions. Let's throw bananas at all the minions. Sure. No. Uh, so yeah, Muckless Champion is going to be a staple feature of every deck I ever make, I imagine, from this point on, because I love that card. Um, what else went in there? Uh, oh, the thing that reduces your hero power to one mana. That was a nice little one. That, that gives you better. And there's one that increases your he- hero power to do more damage. So you, you, I, the, thing, the theory there was, hey, if we're having a mana tap race down to nothing, it would behoove me to have a mana tap that deals three damage to me instead of two. As weirdly counterintuitive as that is, it kind of works here. Which which card is that? Uh, something from TGT, and I can't for the life remember what it is. But one of them, it's it's designed for like mage and hunter. It's your hero power does one extra damage. You're not supposed to use it in Fallen a Fallen hero. That uh, might be it. Yeah. Fallen hero is a mage only card, though. Uh, there no, there was a neutral card. I did. Um. I do. There is a neutral card in TGT which increases the damage of your hero power just generally by one, which I, it really isn't going to work for many characters. It's really only, only going to work for... It's going to work for Mage, Hunter, and Warlock, I guess. Is there anything else? Uh, you, maybe if you went Shadow Priest, you could get that, I suppose. Well, but... like you... It would work with Priest. You'd just heal one. 
I don't think that's how it works. I think it's when it specifically does damage to something, it increases the damage by one. I don't think it adds one damage to a healing okay. move. So, the, so hero power, we have... Uh, there's all those. Um, um, I think I'm... Like, what you're saying makes sense. I'm just really confused. Like, have I forgotten about everything? So there's fallen hero. Your hero power deals one extra damage, which is mage only. And we have, um, you can use your hero power twice a turn. Um, uh, no, I have no clue what you are talking about. Sure, it's something that I'm wrong. Uh, that's going to annoy me as well now. And I don't, the thing, the thing is, I don't know what to look for on the Hearthstone wiki for it. I'm on the Hearthstone well, wiki I, I looking mean, for it. I, uh, there's hero power. There's a list of all the cards that relate to hero powers. Is so there? Oh, okay. So there's stuff like Bone Guard Lieutenant, Argent Watchman, and like Fallen Hero is what you're talking about, but you can't play that in Warlock. I don't know what to tell you because I did. Oh. I absolutely well, did. Well, no, I mean, may- maybe you got it from a piloted treader. Oh, oh, that's probably one of the, uh, the, the cards you got at the end of your turn. Oh, it could have been. Yeah, that might that might be it. I don't recall it having a color on it. I did look at it. I was like, "Is this a thing?" I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah but okay. Good. Good. Glad we had. Maybe that wasn't part of my strategy. Maybe I was lucky then. I thought. I thought I had a thing. The, um, I, yeah. Well, you, you, uh, well you, you, I, can I, Google, you can Google "fallen here" and see if what it looks like. But yeah. I am looking at the but yeah, I guess, cards um, for, for, for for filler content. While you do that, um, yeah, you're, you're, the interesting uh, thing about um, the interesting thing about this brawl is that nowhere did it say that it wasn't all any mini that could be summoned into your turn, but it was almost like ninety nine point nine 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 certainly only two or three mana cost minions that could be summoned, which makes yeah, sense from a balance big. perspective. Yeah, but still like. If if you're trying to build a deck around trying to get a lot of tempo swings in the late game, they're like that is actually pretty relevant to know. Yeah, the the first match I did, I think I, I went up against a mage who I presume was playing for burst damage because they kind of just let me get massive dominance over them, but also reasonably low on health as a part of doing it. Uh, and then at the end, they started pulling out like the fireballs and stuff. And then I disconnected from the match, and I have no idea who won it. I presume it wasn't me. But uh, freeze yeah. mage, yeah. I yeah, it was uh, loads of stuff on my board, and then yeah, the frost nova. Your internet does not everything. do well, does it? Sorry, your internet does not do well. Uh, yeah, well, it's it's the best we've got. We we are in the land of the crummy internet, from Great Britain. Uh, poor, poor Thor. But yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so then I went up against a warrior who uh, AFK'd. So hey, woo! That would that would, that was a win. Yay! I, I, at first I was like, is this some sort of interesting strategy? No, he's gone. <laughs> that okay. that is actually a strategy that you can do occasionally, is because um. In ranked play, the two dominant warrior um, archetypes are Patron Warrior and Control Warrior. And Patron Warrior has a card called Battle Rage, which draws you a card for every damaged character you have, which includes yeah. your hero. For which means that you oftentimes, if you're facing up against like a druid or something, you don't want to armor up turn one, because then you want the hero to de- the druid to deal one damage to you, so then you can get your card. You don't want the druid to know that you're doing that purposefully, because then the druid will know that you're a patron warrior and play around you. So oftentimes what you'll see people do is pretend to disconnect, just so that um, it's up in the air over whether or not like you're actually a patron warrior, or you're just a control warrior that has uh, disconnected, and you want to pu- try to push in as much damage as you can before the control warrior gets tons of farm. That's ridiculous. Also, would you really play that card just for one card draw? Um, surely you'd surely you'd want to wait till you've got like three well, or four minions well, on the board, yeah, well, and yeah, then use like the surely the idea is use whirlwind and then that just but to yeah, make but, hit yeah, everything. Yeah, but I mean the, the thing that is still the case something. that you might have to use it early on if you have absolutely nothing in your hand. Okay. And then even if you do use it later, it's better to have two cards than one card, or better to have three cards. 
cards in one card. And I mean, like, you wouldn't do this against a hunter. If you're facing off against, like, a hunter, for example, they're going to have damaged you by the time you're going to use Battle Rage. So you would want to armor up. But if you're facing against a druid or something that focuses on doing a small amount of damage early on and then a lot of burst damage later, like, um, having three cards instead of two cards is more relevant than having the extra life point. Well, extra two life, po- life points, yeah. Okay, then. Did you indulge in the underdog rules or not? I did indeed. Well, I mean, free pack, gotta. Um, I opted to not record that with Matt in the Hat because I just... At the end of the day, it's just like you play uh, you play Handlock with Pit Lord, and it's just Handlock. And yeah, I, I didn't... I felt like it was an interesting... I, I felt like it was sort of like... It's the same sort of thing as, like, the, the Mookla's birth on sort of thing. Where it's sort of like, it's an interesting idea, and it's, you know, really cool and stuff, but it's so easy to sort of, like, I don't know, abuse or something. But, yeah, I, I played some of it. I, uh, I played using a priest because, um, at, at first I, I had thought that, um, the, you know, you would have any minion in the game summoned, which obviously makes the, uh, the minions a lot bigger. So I was figuring that I could try to heal the warlock, let him do his thing, it doesn't even matter. And I just control the ward, control the ward, control the ward. Eventually I would take damage, and at that point I could have a lot of minions to swarm the enemy. But I'm, I think the war, warlock would probably be better even so, I don't know. It's just, it was like, he deals two damage to himself, and then... I spend two mana healing him. Like, he's drawn a card and I haven't. So, yeah, it was just... I don't know, it was just... It, it didn't seem that a, a, a brawl, and... I mean, it's it's interesting to do, like, once, because it's, it's sort of like the, mel- the most giant effect when playing against because You have to worry about their life total and, like, how much damage it deals to them. That's that's cool. That just, that's sort of... It's sort of like... I could see that being, like, a thing in, like, a ranked play format where, like... It matters where you have more than one re- win, and like how many wins you have, or what your win rate is, actually matters. But like for a fun little derpy brawl, where you like you throw random cards at each other, I just felt like it was a bit too. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just thought it was something that was fun and different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, mean, I, I thought it was given fun that... and different. It definitely wasn't as much as a colossal failure as the Moonclaw's birthday one. But I, I, well, I, I just, I just didn't feel like it was something sufficiently unique to merit a uh, uh, exclusive vid- video dedicated to it. Fair enough. I wasn't necessarily talking in video context. I was just yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I enjoyed it. it. No, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, I mean, it's like the, things like the Summoners Brawl that are like for like. 10 games because I really had fun with it. This game, yeah, I got great. my win and I didn't play anymore. But then again, that's just because like halfway through um, I got launched into the uh, massive weird conversation of 13 hours and oblivion. And that just sort of like removed Hearthstone from my life forever. Okay, fair enough. Cool. Yeah. Weird conversations, man. It's insanity. Yeah, I'm not sure if I should apologize or something. <laughs> no, no, it, it was fun. It was just it's just should say. So, um, are you done with your thing, I, Roka? I'm, I'm done. I'm done with Hearthstone. I, I could, I could tell okay, you about go, the fun go, and joy that is Wildstar. Yay! Wildstar's out of out free to play tomorrow. Possibly even tonight. It might be like a midnight launch tonight. They're doing a midnight launch, and I don't know whether it's midnight tomorrow or midnight tonight. I think it could be midnight tonight, but it's midnight in American time, which means it's like five a.m. For us, so I guess I got to stay up till five a.m. now. No, no, I'm not doing that. I got work tomorrow. Uh, no, uh, but yeah, while while Wildstar is happening, get hype, guys. Get get hype. Gonna be playing a lot of that. I have been playing a lot of that. It's. I did find it does. Have, I can't remember whether I mentioned this last week, but I did find it does have gambling mechanics in it, which I'm just like, oh, why would you do that? I know why you would do that. It's because it <laughs> makes money, but god damn it, I w- that of all the free to play mechanics, that's the one I really hate the most. It's just gambling on lock boxes, is what it is. They're always in a different kind of format, but ultimately it's still lock boxes, and. Lock boxes can burn in hell. Whoever invented those should be hung, drawn, and quartered. It's a disgusting mechanic. <laughs> Spent a lot of money on those in Spiral Nights. Lock boxes. I've I've not I've not bought. Well, um, 
I bought a few lock boxes and got crap out of them, but uh, oh, yeah, only, prize I only boxes. Ever, I only ever bought them with like crystal energy. I didn't ever buy them on their own. Right. I prize boxes. I've not really bought many of. Certainly, I've certainly not bought them since they moved over to the proper gambling gambling mechanic. The here buy one for five dollars and chances are you've got a ninety nine percent chance of getting crap in it. Yeah, that's not a good format. And I'm not buying into it. When it was like, here's a box. It's gonna set you back ten dollars, but it's guaranteed to have something pretty cool in it. That's a lock box I can get behind. Mm. When it's five dollars for a ninety nine percent chance of just mediocre drab green or whatever the flavor of the month is crap. It's like. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not buying into that. Those are the odds of getting whatever shiny cool one percent item is in the box is not remotely worth my actually giving you any money for it. I did actually get one of the one percent items once. <laughs> well, more luck than judgment, but hey. <laughs> yes, more money than cents. Yeah, no, I, I I refuse to buy into those kind of systems. I mean. Final Fantasy Record Keeper does it to an extent, but they also give you quite a lot of lockboxes for free just through game mechanics anyway. Oh, like so that. they first so firstly, every time they do a new promo, which is like every week or two weeks or so, the the new promo they let you get the first one for eighty P. So I'll yeah, you know, eighty P I'll buy into a lockbox. You know, that that's a price point that works. Five five to ten dollars, we're suddenly going a little too high on that. Uh, and it's a 10% chance of getting something cool out of it, rather than, like, one. So, ATP for a 10% chance is probably better odds, I think, all things considered. And, yeah, and then on top of that, they let you draw a lot of stuff for free anyway. So, yeah, you can get a lot of really cool items in Final Fantasy Record Keeper without paying real money. And I think that's why it's quite popular, actually. I don't know how successful it is, but it's certainly popular. <laughs> it's got that going for it. And Sky Saga is still free and still doesn't have any monetization. I don't know how they're making that work, but hey, good on them. <laughs> I imagine they must have just got a lot of investment capital on that score. I hope so. <laughs> so yeah, those, those are my things. I started building in Sky Saga. I started doing that again. I now I, I bought an island. It is in yeah. the jungle, and I wish to... And it, it came with a temple like the one I had last time as my home, and I completely leveled that. That took some yeah. work. A temple of Neil? It was a you know, more of a ziggurat kind of deal. Oh, okay. Good, good. Consider yourself, uh, I, I will let you off this once. I like a big ziggurat with a huge stone sword stuck in the top, and it was like, well, this has got to go. So I just, like, removed the entire thing, just sat and watched YouTube for, like, an hour and just dug. So, yeah, that's gone, and now I'm going to build, I am going to build a temple in its replace. In, in its place. Uh, words. I know the words. Uh, I want to build a Japanese-style temple, because they're cool. I built one once on a Minecraft creative server, so I know what I'm doing, probably. That's my life. Uh, oh, and I, 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 I've dipped a toe into Yotun, because that is out tomorrow, which we'll probably get to in releases as well. And I wanted to be able to get a review, critique video thingy, first impressions up tomorrow, uh, by the time the video is out today, but... Um, don't think that's going to happen later this week. Definitely, I will be taking a look at that on my channel because it is very, very, very cool. Yay! Viking mythology. It's awesome. Yeah, uh, Sounds good. Yay. Ooh, Viking mythology. I, I know about that. Um, Nibelung and Lee, Legend of Sigurd. I had a video on my channel talking about good times. Sweet. Um, Talk us, have you been playing anything? Or? Of, as a member of Scandinavia, what is your opinion on the Vikings? Weird. Cool. Okay, I'm, I'm glad you had it. Good talk. Good talk. Good talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm I think we're in that. agreement there. Yeah. Vikings are yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. I actually, you know, as far as like the pillaging thing is concerned, like... No, I don't think pillaging people are cool. And for that matter, I don't feel well, like... Well, pir pirates pi did pir that, and pirates are cool. <laughs> well, I suppose it all depends on how you define cool, isn't it, is Maroka? I oh, define pillaging uh, as cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a very special guy, Maroka. <laughs> anyway... Well, thank you for that. Uh, Hearthstone, um... I had very little time to play Hearthstone this week, because, um... Internet was gone, as I spoke of. 
and Weirta happened. Um, so, where to begin? Well, I had a Strange Lands episode go out, and um, I, I guided the two remaining pigs left over from the uh, butchering of the anniversary contest, namely Modi Porcorandus and Pigamittens, to uh, yeah. Cecile's hotel at Oddport and give them their own little apartment. And then um, I added um, there was a name tag called Sesquil that was left over from that thing. And Modi gave it to me and told me to use it well. So I used that. Then there's a like, really weird glitch where like I could like add the name pet tag onto an unnamed pig. Then like I could right click and the name tag would just appear again. And I would like relog and just like the name would disappear. So I guess no Sesquil. I don't know. And also, apparently, it's impossible to take saddle off pigs, which is strange. But yeah, yeah you, that was... you just got to stab them. But yeah, there, there was that. Then I also had a uh, a segment that I'll probably put in later, but I edited out of this one due to length, where I had um, like ten minutes, uh, uh, like a good four minutes, uh, talking about how um, the, the fixer right regime had uh, gave gave a uh, pass to authority to invite Weirta to the group without giving me said authority. And I was uh, annoyed by this discrimination, and then he insulted me further, and I was very angry. We will someday yet ride the revolution. And speaking of which, we were to, did you ever add me as friend on Town of Salem? I sent you friend request. Uh, I think I didn't know this. That I, I will add no. you, though. Yeah, yes, you, you must, because then I will have... I, 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 you know, then the past is pretext will be taken away from him, and Fix will no longer be able to justify his, his cruelty. Anyway, so that was that uh, video. Um, Hearthstone, Tamron, we already talked about. Man Play, already talked about. Um, uh, yeah, so... Um, oh, uh, also, also, before... Uh, 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 I forget about things. Uh, button mash. Button mash. Um, on the, on the, in the comments of the last podcast, you know what is coming, mate. You know what is coming. Um, you know, it, it's, it's coming. We have... Um, I, I uh, posted the, uh, the full text of the Declaration of Independence... And uh, oh, Mook said something uh, cruel and mean and disrespectful. But a certain individual... I said dislike flagged as spam. <laughs> yeah. The certain I individual... I did dislike it. I didn't flag it as spam, though, I'll be Aww. honest. Well, Although I'm genuinely astonished that that didn't just get caught into, like, the YouTube for spam system anyway. Oh, well, my, my email to you got caught in it, so, you know, 50-50. Exactly. But anyway... The um, internet knows what you talk about. But I, uh, a certain individual... Who goes by the name of IT Number Games replied to that comment saying, quote, a man, hashtag America. So, as you can see, Maroka, your cruel will is diametrically opposed to the law of the masses, and we will rise up and we will overthrow you that you dare tax certain foreign imp into our ports, that you dare do that. One penny tax, man, we will rise up. No, our empire is in- inconquerable. No, angry face. Grr, grr, grr. Um, but yeah, uh, we are to conversations. Um, on Friday, I had a 13... On Friday, I spent 13 hours talking to Weirta Metamuntaya, or as she's better known, Aww, or perhaps known, I don't know. And then yesterday, I spent like... Like, like, like she was just like, at, at 1 p.m., she declared, I'm going to bed. Guess what she actually went to bed, Maroka? Guess. I, I don't know. Five! Five! The okay. girl's insane. Yeah, I, I am. I don't even know. But yeah, that was very strange conversation. I, I have never had any conversations quite like the strangest conversations of my entire life. And I think it'd be, it's safe to say that at this point, I am all conversationed out. And I can never have any conversations with anyone ever again. Okay, I so, think we should probably start looking at wrapping this up, because I'm looking at the game releases, and I think we've got an inordinate okay. list again. Okay, so. finally, finally, UHC, as we said, went out. Um, I'm in a full iron armor by the end of the episode, evidently. So we have that. Oh. Good talk. I think you're ahead of me, but... Yeah. <laughs> did, you make the, act- did you make a wooden axe, Maroka? Did you make a wooden axe? I don't remember... I was mo- editing it. I was mo- I mean, we recorded this weeks ago. Editing it, I was mostly concerned about picking out a soundtrack than making a note of the exact events that went down. Well, if you if you made what an axe man, then I will be, I, I will be, I will note that in my subreddit post. It will be noted. To be fair, I think I tried to be a bit more efficient about the stuffs that I did. Yay! 
I wonder how many people uh, made wooden tools just to spite me. You know, the sort of thing they do. Bah. I mean, I know I started, like, on top of a mountain. It was uh, most of me, uh, the early game, I was just like, don't fall off the mountain. Well, I, I started inside the world border. Cool. Well, that's where you're supposed to start. Well, I mean, like, like, like the block where there was world border, there was me. Oh, it's kind of, oh, don't like, move, like, I was please don't start moving. I was in the world moving. border, half in, out the world border. Okay, that's a precarious place. Okay, so Weirdo, so what is your opinion on the conversation we had? Good talk. On a scale of 1 to 10. 15. Sweet. All right. That's, okay, good talk. Um, now we will, uh, now, a uh, word from our sponsors. But Mash Podcast is back. Welcome back to the second half of the Button Mash Podcast, where we talk about uh, games and gaming accessories and other such things. And today we will be dis- doing a Desert Island disc downloads of derpiness with a um, certain Wirtamuntaya, where uh, she and all her sp- and glory, um, transformer. That, that's what the name means, by the way. Is current transformer. We'll just call her that. So we're going to ask current transformer to uh, tell us her five favoriteest games and why she likes them. If she was exiled to a desert island for the rest of her life and had no sort of nefarious means to try to secretly get off the island, like she's there willingly and voluntarily, she's done with like not being with anyone for the rest of her life. Well, I guess we can say that her husband is there too because you know where she loves her husband. Um, yeah, stuff. I think we got the gist, yeah. Okay, so I'm starting with The Sims 4 because I'm a girl and I like to play (laughs) play The Sims. And The Sims 3 is the second one because... I thought The Sims 3 was the third one. No, it's the second one. I've updated the list. No, no, I wasn't wasn't joking. I was in the third game. (laughs) Yeah, I'm being today or every day whatever but yeah like they're kind of the same game but not really the mechanic is different so i'm taking the taking both of them three and Did four the, are we including the, are we including all the expansions as well because otherwise yeah. yeah you're not going to get a lot in the core games yeah like the base games games are like pretty similar i'd say but the expansion packs bring a lot a lot, a lot of stuff, in, like in the gameplay sense of things. I can't speak. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. The third, third one for me is Minecraft because, like, that's pretty much an endless game. You can do whatever. I we, we discussed this before. I, I feel like at some stage we're gonna have to turn around to people and say, no, you can't have Minecraft on your list because it's it's the one thing I think everybody's going to say because. Yeah, uh, there's a lot to do in it, even in and of itself. And then when you add in the stuff that other people have made, user-generated content, adventure maps, competitive maps, mini game sort of servers and stuff, yeah, that game's yeah that keeps going. Well, I mean, it's the game that the keeps problem, on giving. Roka, is that everyone, every single person that you are likely to invite onto this podcast, you know through Minecraft, ergo, that is what their answer will be. Uh. I... No, that's not true. Uh, okay. I have but one I mean, guest lined up that I don't know through Minecraft. <laughs> I mean, like, like besides people like Will, that you know, you know IRL. No, no, no. I, I know, I know another guy uh, who actually is also IRL. But uh, yeah. Um. Sunil. No. Yeah. Yeah, but don't judge my list because I had difficulties to come up with five games, to be honest. So <laughs> Minecraft okay. had to be there. That's fair yeah. enough. We we haven't had we haven't had Minecraft enough times yet that we've had to ban it yet. But if people keep saying it, I will. Yeah. So help me, I will. Yeah. Okay. The fourth one for one for me is in the groove. You know the dance game thingy. No, I don't know in the groove. So like, you have to tell us what in in the groove is. Like Dance Dance Revolution, do you oh, know right. that one? I, I know, I, yeah, I know DDR, yes. Yeah, so that one, because exercise and stuff. <laughs> right. And it's not enough no, ways to get exercise on a desert island, so we yeah. need. Okay. And it's a fun game. Obviously, I would need that dance 
pad thingy too, but yeah. You could make one out of coconuts, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. And then the final one would be Civ 5 because it's a time sink. And I'm imagining I'd have plenty of time if I was on a deserted island. Yep, yeah, time, I, time enough to play Civ. I, I gave <laughs> Civ, uh, listed three ta- Civ three times in my one. Um, tell me, Weirta, in Civilization 5, what is your favorite Civilization and why, including all the expansion pack of Civs? I wasn't ready for this question. <laughs> <laughs> you well, always be prepared Civ- for the Tolkus. Yeah, well, I know I should be. An, but an, an, an unexpected Tolkus is unexpected. Um, <laughs> well, we could come back to you if you want, but I mean, just what Civ do you enjoy playing the most? Uh, uh, there's my answer. <laughs> okay. Like, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed. We'll, 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 we'll back to you at the end, I think. Um, no, no, yeah, no, my, no. Oh, okay, we we won't come back to you at the end. Uh, my Good. favorite Civ, since I didn't say that in my thing, is a uh, is Siam actually. Um, it, I mean, obviously the best Civ in the game is like Poland, and then you have like Babylon and Korea, etc., etc., etc. But my favorite Civ is a uh, Siam because I really enjoy the uh, the Watt, the science boost it gives, and Ruth and elephants are cool for uh, elephantness. And um, I also really enjoy working with city states. That reason I also really like uh, Greece. But I think that the Siamese bonus is quite a bit stronger, and it's basically the same thing. So I like Siam, and having lots of little city-state buddies to uh, have declare war on my friends and be absolutely meaningless and do nothing and make them right-click on them a bunch, make their declarations go away and ignore them for the rest of the game. Good talk. Yep. And now let us move on to gaming releases. Uh, we're not actually. Are we actually not doing oh, our news. silly gaming, gaming news, news then? News, right? There's gaming news about um from the Guardian, which isn't gaming news, but I'm sure I they made, do that some, from time to time. Well, like like um, I made the theory that um, really, what is a spaceship if not like a form of video gaming IRL? It's like FTL <laughs> but IRL. So that justification. We have the Guardian link. I, I've still tried to be a host here. I, I may not have been ready to accept this mantle, but I am. Um, as a scientist, find evidence of flowing water on Mars, and that is cool. That's not much cool. flowing water, but it's like it's there, and it's there currently, and I think that would be to potentially make it like habitable in the 2030s-ish. So, you know, the Tolkien generation, you know, when the Maroka generation... Speaking of which, man... What? Speaking of which, something that we did not mention what? is that last week, Will turned 29. Eight. I say, he's <laughs> yeah. not older than me, no. Oh, Eight, I, I thought yes. you were 28. I, I, I had a birthday. And you know what this, and you know, like, I can't believe you allowed us to gloss over the fact, well, I am mad at you. I am irate. <laughs> I am agitated. Why um, not grow old in peace? But anyway, I, I just felt like this was sort of like relevant because this means that I believe that now both Maroka and Will are 28. This is true. And I am 20, but a certain uh, last, known as Weirta Metamuntaya, 24. So this means that she has the ability to translate all the boring old foggy <laughs> old speak into, you know, the, the hip young American slang. So, uh, Maroka, make a statement. Good show, old boy. What, what her pip pip tally her chocks away? We're to translate that to uh, my language. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm, I'm not a native English pe- speaker. This is way too difficult. Not for a me. qualified interpreter here, no. <laughs> oh, well, but just try to not really just the, the the mood in which it was sent. Like, like try to get me like sort of like. What do you think of Maroka? Like, what was he feeling? Like, what? allow me to relate to the older generation. Like, when he said those words, what emotions do you think run through that wonderful mind of his? Joy and happiness. Okay. Joy and happiness, I can relate to. Glad we have that. But anyway, um, but yeah, there's, um, they said that there would be enough water to, you know, the planet in like a very thin layer of water. So there's not enough water, but there's enough Water. I mean, I have not. I know nothing about science. Full disclosure, but it's just. It's just that, like you know, you can get oxygen f- from water, and you can grow plants using water. So basically, like water, possibly like the big things you need to helpfully establish a uh, community on 
are, like right now, without any fantasy pants terraforming stuff. So I thought that was pretty cool. Good talk. I, I heard a really interesting thing about the terraforming, actually, from some, I think he was an American scientist, I forget his name entirely, which is unfortunate, but uh, is basically to terraform, to get the right climate for Mars instantly, we would more or less have to detonate two nuclear bombs at either pole, and and that would fix the problem. That seems yeah, like I, an easily fixed problem. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard that too, but I think the big thing that, like, that sort of maybe takes a while for... I, I mean, I, I I have no idea, but yeah. It's, can, it's, can we not well, just, like, have Mad Max? Well, to weigh, to weigh in on the scientific perspective, I'm guessing the destination of the nukes would melt the ice caps, the ice caps of Mars being almost entirely, if not yeah, entirely, yeah, composed yeah. of frozen carbon dioxide. So you'd be releasing the entirety of the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which would mm-hmm. increase the global temperature because of the greenhouse effect. Yeah. And, yep. yeah, it would make a habitable temperature yeah, if nothing else the, that, and we could have Mad max in space yeah yeah it'd be it'd be cool but like now you don't even have to do that you just go down pop yourself down mars and like make a little house and live in that house like like yeah house that's house. literally how that works yes yeah yeah like like, like we're to, we're to probably society. have the house tell you what we're to if you could build a house on mars say for a tolkacon or whatever what sort <laughs> of a house would you build an awesome one of course Okay. What about you, Will? I, I, I live in a car. Okay. I'm, I'm glad we have... Yeah, okay. <laughs> good. Good. Good talk. Um, I suppose you... Yeah, I suppose you probably couldn't bear to be separated from your neighbor's puppies, so it's kind of a redundant question. Like, I, I like I asked, like, if you could bear to be separated from your neighbor's puppies, like, what would you do? But then again, like, you know, if you were, could bear to be separated from your neighbor's Puppies, you wouldn't really be Will, now would you? I feel like I could leave them alone and they would build their own society. Yeah! Society entirely run by puppies. <laughs> that would... Oh, but Do you think that if I went to that society they would accept me into their arms and love me? Or do you think they would kill me as an outsider? With, the with their teeth, surely. The puppies would be a militaristic no. race, overthrowing all who would oppose them. <laughs> no. Ah, sadness. Um, they would be warlike and xenophobic. And this is why we left Earth for Mars. Yep. Okay, so uh, I guess we're to... If you could transform any current on Mars, what would you transform? Uh, like, man, you asked two difficult questions. <laughs> I can't answer okay. these. I'm not even sure what he was asking, though. There, there are currents, and you can transform them... Look, she's an engineer. I'm, I'm trying to ask her something relevant to oh, her profession. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. Answer this, okay? We're ta. What is your profession? I'm an engineer, electrical power engineer, to be exact. You would fit in well in Sparta. Uh, yeah. So if you could engineer anything on Mars, okay, we'll try to move on now. If you could, en- last question. If you could engineer anything on Mars, what would you engineer? Electricity. Okay. Good. <laughs> Electricity on Mars. Good. Let's move on to some new releases. Let's you, do some releases. You, can make, you, can, make, you mm. can make the electricals inside the cars, and I could add all the spiky metal bits. Yay! And, and what could I do? That's Mad oh, Max. I could, yeah. I could be, I could be the, the blood that covers the interior. Like that <laughs> <laughs> Like you could, like, you, there could be, like, blood stains on, like, all the seats and stuff. I could contribute that. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's do some gaming releases. We've got a lot to get through, so uh, let's uh, let's open the right tab because I haven't even opened up my giant bomb tab. And then find the First right dates. Where are we at? We have Lego Dimensions, which is for the Wii U, X One, X Three Sixty, PS Three. I'm going to let Broker do the introduction because he knows things that I don't. But yeah, this is all about so like a. a it's pretty cool. It's like all the uh, like a massive universe with from properties like the Lord of the Rings, which so much for letting possibly, me do the intro, but okay. Like, <laughs> there, it's Lego. Um, it's Lego's Lego's entry into Toys to Life, like uh, like your Disney Infinity, is it? And your Amiibos and your Skylanders, but this one's Lego. So now yeah, you go out and you buy all the Legos, and then the Legos come to life in your game. So you go buy yourself Ch- a Chow Lego Batman. You have a Lego Batman. That's cool. I, I like Chell. 
Um, and there's uh, Gandalf and Gollum. There, there better be talks in here. There's Legolas. Um, talk, talk. Is there no, no, there's no talk. No. I, I think, I think you're forgetting the most important part of this is that you can get the DeLorean from Back to the Future in it. <laughs> but but they could have had me. I guess they probably couldn't have, because Christopher Tolkien would not give up the rights to talk us. But, um... Aquaman yeah. is in it. Aqu- Aquaman is important. He's basically a murloc. But, I mean, Ormo isn't in it. I mean, Ormo is cool, and Aquaman in it. Actually, I think the Aquaman is actually a pretty darn cool superhero, but... So, yeah, got Back to the Future. That's all you guys need to know. But no Tolkien. So if you're wanting to play with Tolkien, then no. But I mean, like, uh, Gandalf is my cousin, so, like, you can talk to him about me, maybe. Okay. Uh, We have Persona 4, Dancing All Night, and Dancing All Night's Disco Fever Edition. Which, I guess, is a spin-off thingy of Persona 4, which I've never played any of the Persona games, I don't know if anyone else has. No. Nope. Nope. Good. Nope. Good. Good but these talk. images are really creepy. I've not looked at the images. I just, I, I just looked at the page. What's the, what's the? Oh, they, are, they're so creepy. Is really disturbing. Those are like <laughs> terrifying. Is that is that guy's face that is in all on all the characters? Is that a thing? Yeah, or? I don't know. Because there's just like one really weird guy's face that's made of like solid gold, and they put it on every character, including the women, and I don't know why. Is that a thing in Persona? Is that a Persona thing? I don't well, know. Well, it's all your one Persona. You're just doing one Persona. That's what a Persona is. You know, you take on that Persona of the dude. Okay, well, that, he, he's creepy and I don't want to take on his Persona. But this is, a, <laughs> this is a Persona rhythm game. So if you're into that particular franchise and wanted a rhythm game thing for the Vita in I that mean, franchise... I mean, it's called Dancing All Night and I happen to know a certain individual who has a rather fondness for dancing games. Yeah, they could, you could take that to a desert island and dance all night with it. Yeah. <laughs> Would be fun. Not sold, are you? Yeah. Okay, Grand Dude. Age is Medieval, which sounds like a Tolkien thing. But there's very Ooh, little to go um, on. Uh, upcoming real-time strategy game from Gaming Mind Studios. I don't know. Think about RTS, or real-time strategy, that, like, if games like Age of Empires and Age of Mythology. I've watched hundreds upon hundreds of hours of Age of Empires 2 on the uh, Zero Empires channel. He's a guy that uh, 50,000 subscribers uploads pretty much exclusively Age of Empires 2. He's, it's very, very cool to see it play at the highest level, and it's just, I'm just not good. I'm just terrible, so terrible at RTS. Like, I, I wish, I wish I was good at RTS games, but my, re- I have an APM of, like, 2, so yeah. Cool. It's probably higher than mine. I just like to stare at the farmers farming and be like, ah, oh, farmer, then the bad guys come and kill me. And I'm like, ah. Well, we've got uh, Arcana Heart 3 Love Max with five exclamation marks after it. Just to emphasize things. Uh, it's it's an anime thing. It's uh, Google tells me it is a 2009 2D arcade fighting game. Ah. With, with very scantily clad a, ladies. A fine part anime of Western ladies. culture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, let's uh, move on from that. NBA! Anybody like the basketballs? Oh, um, no. Um, no, actually. Yeah, no. But it, but it's it's America, so sort of uh, Pacers, man. Root, root for the Pacers. And also the Pac- actually Pac- uh, the, the Pacers, yeah, Pacers. They, they're the Indianapolis basketball team. And yeah, root for them. Uh, this one is directed by Spike Lee as well, apparently. Okay, that's good. I wonder if they have a Siku slash Banker's Life Fieldhouse in that. There was a fun experience in that. When, um, when I was in high school, uh, middle school, we had a, a, an event there, and it was poorly organized. Yeah, fun times. Okay. But, yeah, um, the NCAA, the, uh, that's a prof- the college equivalent of this, the NCAA football thing. Their headquarters are in Indianapolis, which is cool. Noted. Okay, and uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Five. Moving on with the sportses. Um, yeah, so it's, it's this isn't a specifically American. Actually, I think that basketball happens in the East, doesn't it? 
Uh, we are aware it of happens. its existence. It happens. We allow it. <laughs> we allow I it see. to exist. <laughs> is there is there any basketball in Finland? It's not outlawed. Yeah. Okay, so basketball is well, NBA is an American thing. So because yeah. like it's no basketball association like national, but this is not strictly speaking an American thing. This is a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Five, and it's um, there's a lot of like innovations and soundtracks, but it was not by Jeff Van Dyke. You know, no Rims of War and stuff. And this apparently takes the series back to its roots after how many years of taking the franchise in different directions. What that means, I have no idea. It means that the previous the Skater games all sucked, so now they're making one that, that is good. They did make the one with the plastic skateboard that you could stand on that was like yeah, 100 yeah. quid, and I was working in a game shop at the time when that came out, and I don't think we sold many of them. I don't remember selling many. And I've seen them for sale for second hand for like a couple of quid now recently it's like you can pick them up for nothing and they were so expensive it was crazy yeah we should probably buy one for button mash just for novelty lols but that, that's the sort of thing you know if you're your pr thing you have to say i know everyone hated the previous games we want to try to return to your roots you don't want to actually insult the previous game to be all I, actually stuff. that's kind of uh, it's kind of how sports works isn't it Where, with the annual releases i've kind of uh, what I've seen of the sort of your sports franchise announcements, they every year they hype the the current one that's upcoming as being the biggest best thing ever. But in order to actually sell next year's, they have to completely slag off the previous one. It's like, oh yeah, last year's was awful. Oh god, did you see the bugs? Oh man, it was terrible. No, no, no we, we way improved this one. This one is the definitive one. You know, you you played two you played two K fifteen. Two K fifteen was garbage you need 2k16 in your life go out and buy 2k16 now because the people are appealing to already bought 2k15 anyway so they don't need to appeal to them anymore so yeah sports is weird like that so yeah yes. all the other ones suck this one's great go buy it yep yep good talk yep. um dungeon defenders uh duh that has uh, been on pc since the Beginning of time, I think. Okay, well, there's a Dota Star mode. Is it? Is it uh, actually, it has two been out on PC. Which one is it? No, oh, no, this one, it's... Actually, I don't know. Defend all the dungeons. It, yeah, the thing, uh, I, I just glanced at it and I was like, Dungeon Defenders? Man, I've had that ages. But I guess Dungeon Defenders 2 is the new? Well, it must be the new one, isn't it? Yeah. I thought, I thought that was out now by now. Oh, if yeah. you were... Weirdo, if you were a dungeon, how would you defend yourself? I don't know. I would shut down or something. No one okay. could get in. Okay, you would close the door and hope that no one brings the battering ram. What would you do, well? Boiling oil. Okay. All the boiling oil. All the boiling oil. Just flood the entire complex with oil and make it boil. Ain't no one swimming through many yards of boiling oil. Okay, good. Okay. Well, that's Dungeon of... Yeah, I, th I think most people probably own this because it's been on sale with all the DLC on, like, Humble, like, loads of times. They've done bundles, which was like, here, for $2, buy this game and all 100, 100 of the DLC packs or something. It's not... Well, you, you are silly. I'm, in fact, I think they've given it away free as well on a number of occasions, so you are very silly. Well, people I should own this thing. It is like Orcs Must Die. It was, it was originally released at the same time as Orcs Must Die. It's kind of... It's... Except this one's cooperative. It's four-player cooperative tower defense, action tower defense thing. Build build towers, defend the things, and use your fireballs and swords and whatnot to fight things off. Yay! But yeah, our Army Krug, that looks weird. But Fallout Anthology is apparently on PC five times. Not sure if you want to go look at that, but that, it's on yeah, PC that's, five that, times, apparently. Yeah, that's kind of strange. That is literally listed on the PC five times over. That is from 1997. I think most people should be aware of the existence of the Fallout okay. franchise at this Good stage. Talk. So, Army Krog is... Ooh, a pun click, clay muppet, animated adventure game. Have we ah. not talked about this like a dozen times, and every yeah. single time we go, what the heck is this? I'm sure this was already out. Why is this not out yet? And we keep talking about it, and we keep saying the same thing about it, and I'm, all I've got is the same thing as we said last time. I, I, I don't remember it. But. It's a point-and-click clay and puppet animated adventure by a bunch of people who I don't recognize as being significant for anything, so uh, the names mean little to me. Uh, okay. The, the Neverhood creators? What was the Neverhood? Oh, I loved Neverhood. That was a brilliant game. Okay. This is like a long, long time ago. <laughs> so, uh, oh, it's, he's also the guy who created Earthworm Jim, so there you go. 
A. Good luck. So next up, we have uh, Ninja Pizza Girl, a flow-centric platforming game about bullying. That's a admirable uh, goal. I remember reading an article about this a while back, which was quite interesting. In as far as it was, the the development team is actually a family, a husband and wife, and uh, I think two daughters as well, kind of all contributed to this. And I think the father, when he originally kind of you know, roughed out the concept. You're like, oh, Ninja Pizza Girl, she's going to deliver pizzas running across the rooftops and fighting off zombies and robots and things. And pitched it to her daughters, and they were like, that, that, that's terrible. Why, why is she fighting robots and zombies and things? And it was like, oh, because they're scary. And it was like, no, they're not scary. Why, why are robots and zombies scary? It's like, okay, well, okay, what, what is scary to a teenage girl? Bullies. Your other kids. Other kids are scarier than robots. No, no kid goes to school every day in fear that they're going to be attacked by robots and zombies. Kids go to kids go to school and they're worried that they're going to be ostracized by their peers or you know things that kids yeah. deal with. So well, they kind of change the theme of the game to yeah. kind of deal with that, which sounds kind it's, of interesting. Yeah, it, it does sound interesting. I'd be. I'm not sure how you would really like. Uh, I mean, there's always you know the danger with that that it gets to be too preachy or too focused on trying to sell your message. But I do think that bullying is definitely something that, you know, needs to be addressed, obviously. And I think that, you know, if this does it well, then that is a very, very good thing. Um, as, our, uh, as our resident female, Weirdo Metamuntaya, what's your opinion on the relationship of uh, womanhood with ninjas and pizza? I like pizza, but I'm not sure about the ninja stuff. I see. So basically, if, if if you had to make a game, you would just be Pizza Girl. Yeah. Could be Viking Pizza Girl. That's Ooh. true. Or Pirate Pe Pizza Girl or something. Yay, Pirate Pizza Girl. <laughs> okay, Pirate Pizza Girl. Good talk. Also, Freedom and... Planet. Freedom Planet is out. Again. Yay. For some reason. <laughs> did we not? We did this very recently. Was that on the Wii and then now this one's the Wii U? I don't know. This is basically Sonic if Sonic didn't suck anymore. Go buy it. It's incredible. <laughs> you need to buy it. I played through it twice on my channel. I should have played through it a third time, if I'm honest, but I never got around to doing the third character. Well, that was the, uh, that was the, angstiest, in the angstiest endorsement I've seen. Um, it's just... I, look, I don't need... I don't want to have to go through the whole selling process i just want people to buy it <laughs> it's just like there is no reason to not buy this a total biscuit very recently got round to actually reviewing it over a year after launch he wanted to do it back then and he's recently did it and again he's just like a ridiculously glowing endorsement it's like look aesthetically it's absolutely perfect the soundtrack's great the gameplay is fantastic it's and the level design is just it's all very 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 reminiscent of the old classic 2d platformers right down to details. Everybody tries to do retro-inspired things, but they all fall flat one way or another, and a lot, of, a lot of that is the old stuff had really phenomenal level design, and a lot of the stuff that is like, oh, retro-inspired just doesn't have that. This one really does. This one's fantastic. Go buy it. Okay. They are doing more content for free soon as well. Get, you'll get more characters. God damn it. Buy it. Uh, uh. Moving on to Steam releases. NBA 2K16 have they, uh, 41% positive, so Pacers, no. But first we have Toto Temple Deluxe. Um, Toto Temple the, uh... Deluxe is a fast-paced local multiplayer King of the Hill-style game in which players must steal an egg, steal an egg-laying goat from their friends and try to keep it on their own head for as long as possible. Because why not? I feel like you've seen this somewhere. But that's so bizarre. It Actually, that sounds a lot like move or die in many respects. Maybe. It looks a lot like move or die as well. It, it sounds entertaining, but it looks like a lot of multiplayer indie games I've seen over the course of last year. Bots will play with you whenever you want and for as long as you want. They never complain. They also never open up your fridge and ask if they can eat that pizza slice you got left from last night. Bots are awesome. Oh, and you can change their difficulty level because they will probably kick your ass tarnishing little bottom. Cool. Can I sell you on another game now? <laughs> By all means. Because 80 Days is out on Steam tomorrow as well. Oh my god. This is out, actually out on PC. I kind of feel like I want to play this on my channel, but I tried playing it on a 
Android emulator when it was out on Android, and it was a massive flop in terms of watching as video content, so... Uh, maybe not, but this is a still a ridiculously great game. This is one of the best mobile games of last year. It's 1872 with a steampunk twist. It's around the world in 80 days as a kind of a visual novel, choose your own adventure kind of thing. You play as Phileas Fogg. In fact, you don't play as Fogg. You play as uh, Passepartout, his manservant. And uh, you will travel around the world and you've got to try and pick the most optimal routes whilst managing your resources and money and things and trying not to get, you know, stuck in the middle of nowhere or run out of time or... Whatever. You just make your own way around the planet at your own pace and go on different adventures and things. Uh, I say at your own pace, you're still racing against the clock. you still got to do it in 80 days. It's really good. The story's just fantastic. There's random events and things and the, the routes that you take, different things will play into different things. And you'll meet certain characters and then, oh, you might meet them again further down the line later on because you went a certain route. And some things will happen because you go one way, other things will happen because you, because you go another there's so much to see, there's so much to do, it's fantastic, you should totally be buying it, and I don't even think it's particularly expensive. Yeah, um, the, in terms of money, it is, can, like, does it say where the money is? It doesn't say on Steam, actually, Aww. I remember it was, only, it was only a few quid on Android, which is obviously, anything priced above zero on Android is the price point at which most people won't buy it, which is tr a tragic shame, but thank God, they didn't go down some horrifying free-to-play nickel and diming microtransaction thing. I, I would much rather see a really solid quality game sold for an actual price than being gouged all the time. But this is a really solid game sold for a price that you should absolutely yeah. be playing. I have, in fact, uh, read Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. And oh, I have not, actually. So Yeah, and also, um, a paper last year, um, there is a Beloit, um, a professor from my college who, um, this, like, traveling around the world, not in 80 days, but he just did that, like, he took a year to do it, and I, um, he, his diary was in my college archives, so for a class paper I had to, like, sort of, like, write a summary off that, and what that was about, and, like, he, I mean, like, he goes, uh, he goes through the, uh, he goes to, uh, Germany, this is in 1910, so it's four years before uh, World War Two, and it's just the the craziest thing because like I mean World War One rather, because um it's just like everyone's just like American, yay America, we love America, come be with us, we love you America, yay, and it's just like four years later, bath of war, so that's really interesting to see just to know what would happen in only four years, and then he goes through the through the Suez Canal the uh, east coast of Africa, he spends a few weeks there, sort of chilling with the natives. He's, he does say some, you know, very racist things, which are not good, but what can you do? And then um, he goes to India, across India, and then up sort of to Japan, and then back home. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. I have I have uh, a history with going around the world in time times. Yeah. Sweet. Then you should go around in 80 days tomorrow. Eh, eh. Lift it. To, to, lift it's early access and it looks awful. Don't touch it. <laughs> Whoa, that is okay. That lift it is terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, pretend that never happened. It's an early access title that looks awful about. And it's about weightlifting. Good lord. Okay. Right, do we do the Russian game? Uh, I, I was going to touch on the Russian game. I don't think okay, there's much to talk yeah. about because we can't understand it, but it's a, it, it has a logo in English which says Astro Lords, but then the title of the game is in letters that aren't real letters. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing else. There's nothing else going on. Well, it's, actually, we, I believe that we have someone in our, uh, in our mumble call who happens to be a neighbor to Russia, the Russian Federation. Does she speak yeah. Russian? I can read the letters. Oh, okay. You know what the letters are then. Okay. Do you have are any you words of insight to give to us on this game? Yeah, just a second. I need to process this information from the, my screen. <laughs> I mean, it is tagged as being a free to play, massively multiplayer strategy game, which those words in combination only ever lead me to think of Clash of Clans. It looks. Far more visually complex than Clash of Clans, 
I mean, visually, it looks closer to something like Master of Orion, but I would have great I concerns think, about the, the massively multiplayer bit of it. I think the, the visuals look pretty cool. It does look cool, but if it's Clash of Clans, I ain't touching it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, so that Russian title reads Astro Lordi Aplaga Atra, something about clouds. Uh, and, the and end of the trailer. Yeah. The the Oort clouds. Yeah, the end of the trailer did mention Oort clouds, so that'll be what that is. So, do you know any more about the game, or do you just know what it's called? I know nothing about this game. Okay, okay. Finland, we should write that off then. Gloria Finland. Um, yes, and then next up we have Jotun, which I believe, I believe it's pronounced English. Jotun. Jotun. Actually, I think uh, Bergasms. Do you know Bergasms, Maroka? I know of Bergasms. Yeah, he's one of Brian Lorgan and Levin's friends who like wins the bingo yeah. challenge all the time. Um, he played Jotun like a very long time ago. So that's cool. I played uh, I played a chunk of it a while back on my channel as an early look video, and because of that, I'm familiar with it. I'm aware it's awesome, so I do want to take a full look at this. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, it's a beautifully hand-drawn kind of top-down action exploration thing all set in Norse mythology and you go around you a lot of it's just kind of sightseeing this phenomenally gorgeous world kind of some puzzly exploration stuff going on and then at the end of each section you just get to fight a ridiculously huge epic boss and it's fantastic that does that that the, the visuals on this are pretty darn awesome. That it is awesome. a gorgeous game. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I guess we've... I, I would ask Weird what she thinks about this, but I think we've already established her Viking knowledge. So, good talk. Um, yeah, Jotun looks good. Game, so I'm happy. Unless you want to say anything, Weirta. No, I've got nothing to say. Okay, good talk. Hyperspace, uh, hypership, out of control. Go fast, can't stop. Explosion asteroid, no fun at all. This is a shmup of some sort. It is a vertical scrolling shooter with a lot of coin collecting for some reason. I don't doesn't know. Look, doesn't look terribly original. I'll, yeah, I mean... I'm giving itself high praise. No fun at all. Does it, where does it say that? Oh, no fun. <laughs> oh, it does say, that's literally the description. No fun at all, yeah. Well, that if you explode on the asteroid, then it's no fun at all. Uh, I was going to say it. Uh, yeah, I guess it. It looks kind of different to other things, but at the same time, there are gold coins. Visually, I'm just not digging it. You know, there are gold coins that are spelling out die. And yeah. I think I, I looked up die in Finnish, and it was a cool word. So I'm down with this. Where to? What is die in Finnish? Uh, as in like Deathiness. Ver verb or like sub like what? Ah. To die, the verb. Gwola. Yeah, Gwola. Yes, you have coin thing. Gwola, Gwola. Okay. Gwola. If you want to Gwola, that's out. Okay. Yay. Might and Magic Hero Seven is out, which is a franchise I've never properly dabbled into the main branch of. I played. Um, which one did I play? I played the one that was the PopCap game. It's kind of a PopCap puzzly kind of thing. I, can't, I don't know if it was actually made by PopCap. No, it wasn't. It was made by Capybara Games. It was a very PopCap-y kind of thing, which was literally just playing some kind of puzzle game. It was kind of like Puzzle Quest in many regards, actually. So that was nothing remotely to do with this, but I guess it was kind of set in the same universe. That's literally my knowledge of this franchise. Has anybody played this thing? I played like Heroes of Might and Magic like three like when I was really small. Apparently my okay. father like liked it and gave it to me. Which my father has never shown any inclination for video games, but I don't know. And I, I think 3 was a pretty success. I think that was like one of the, if, if I'm correct, I think that was one of the big ones maybe. that's been really popular I've been like 3 or 4. Yeah. I'm not sure, but I I didn't like it. Then again, like that was at the time when I was in like the middle of my uh, Realm Souls War phase. So like ain't nothing was going to be Realm Souls War. Uh, I also, I, I I kind of feel like, was 7 already out? Is this like a re-release or something? I, I feel like there were more than that. Oh no, Might and Magic Hero 6 was 2011 according to Wikipedia, so no, it is a new one, I guess. Look, look, pretty game. Yay, pretty game. Cool. 
if you're into that franchise, here's more of it. We know little about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I remember it vaguely. It's just, it was, they were like, it's sort of like from, it's sort of like very, it was sort of like Realms of the War in the sense that like you have large scale armies that you move around with large scale. Then when it comes time to battle, you go down into the battlefield and like try to and in life, like individually, like do things, but then it was like a turn timer thing, and I don't know. I it wasn't the it wasn't a game for me, but I can definitely see why people would like it. Um, uh, Samurai Warriors for two. Samurai Warriors four two. Are they doing a Final Fantasy kind of thing there, or are they doing a sequel to a numbered game and they can't <laughs> just increment the number? Uh. And it's like, oh, it's Final Fantasy thirteen two. Do you mean fourteen? No, that's a different thing. Uh, now this is the the latest iteration of the tenth anniversary Samurai Warriors series. Well, I don't. I know a little about it. It. I. It. I feel like it would be a. Uh, I mean, what, we've what? we've already established that uh, Weirta doesn't care much for being a ninja, so. Not sure what you would think about being a samurai. Kind of the same thing, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Not 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 to be weird, but there are girls. Hi, girls. I mean, I get a, I get a very Dynasty Warriors vibe from that. Is it the same? I, I seem to recall we talked about this before. Is it is it like a spin off of Dynasty Warriors? I think possibly. Shogun so. Total War is a game. Yeah. Yes, it is a game, but it's not this game. And you know what else? A good snowman is hard to build. I do we should stop saying that? I don't even have any context for why you would be saying that. Do you think the good snowman is easy to build? <laughs> you asked this question. <laughs> would you stop? No, just no. Stop, stop, please. You see? Exactly. <laughs> no, I failed that game. I didn't build all the snowmen, okay? Well, you see? It's, it's hard to build. Snowmen. I know, but... <laughs> oh... I give up. Uh, Sword uh, Coast, Coast Legends. Coast Legends. Set in the lush and vibrant world of the Forgotten Realms, Sword Coast Legends offers an all new way to enjoy the time tested magic of playing Dungeons and Dragons as a shared story. It's not actually experience. out until October 20th. Okay, ignore that. Um, we're. Okay, good. Glad we have this. Wait, why is it there? I then? don't know. We've been over this a million times. Steam's releases are balked beyond release. Be release? Okay. Be beyond um, belief. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, also, NBA on there is listed as the 24th of September, which has been and gone, and yet it's still upcoming in the 20... Oh, God. See what I mean? See what I mean? But it's, it has its reviews listed. So there's that. Uh, Mighty Gunvolt. A, ooh. Gunvolt, a... Ekoro, and Beck. <laughs> that looks... That's a... That, I, that's an anime-ish looking Mega Man kind of thing, is it? Um, side scrolling platformy shooting stuff that. that looks heavily inspired by Mega Man if I had to say one of these names is less original than the others that's all I have to say well back uh, the mighty gun vault eh. okay so yeah that's uh, the current trend of let's rip off Mega Man I don't know that's been a weird, weird year for everybody going hey let's just make Mega Man the oh, it's just Mega Man, isn't it? It is, yeah. The bizarre creation of Keith, the magnificent. It is a Mad point and click adventure about a wizard Keith. Keith. A wizard Keith and his zombie cyborg friends. It looks decidedly uncompelling. Yeah, uh, the, you, the, the concept sounds cool. Like, you have a mad wizard Keith and you have to, like, Make the the concept seems cool. The game looks absolute crap. It really does. So, oh well. ooh, Dino Run DX. Is that the that's the Flash game that's about a dinosaur running away from the apocalypse, isn't it? Yep. No. They've made I'm, it I'm now not a sure Steam game, so you can pay money like for it. Something you could run away from, though, like. Wasn't the thing about the apocalypse that it was, like, everywhere, therefore being apocalyptic? Well, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try to run from it. Oh. Well, that's a very morbid take on this game. So there's dinosaurs but running says, away from meteorites. It says, come rediscover the original runner and escape extinction all over again. Like, what? Are you... 
I don't understand how you're supposed to escape it. I'm not sure about the scientific accuracy of this game. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly something escaped the Great Extinction, because otherwise we wouldn't be here. The chickens escaped. They're the real dinosaurs. Fear the chickens. It's sh- sharks chicken and stuff. Oh, the original oh, spe- chicken spe- speaking, oh, speaking of chickens, just random aside, just to waste some podcast time, because we obviously are, you know taking up too much time and i need to waste some for some reason uh there's the i don't know if you're familiar with the Ig, uh, the ig nobel prize which is a it's kind of some uh, a, a kind of a parody of the nobel prize which is awarded in a variety of fields every year to really silly research projects that people have done um just because they're funny mostly and i think in I don't, I, don't, I don't know if this was... I don't know which field this was in. Possibly biology. There's some actual research. There is a research paper on this. Uh, basically, it was trying to simulate how dinosaurs would have moved by attaching a long, heavy object to a chicken's oh, tail. Oh, yeah, I remember this. <laughs> which actually was a thing someone did. And apparently it makes a chicken walk like a T-Rex. Ooh, T-Rex, rawr. Because science. Rawr. Because science, yes. So The Ig Nobel Prize, that's entertaining. I like that. Yep. Uh, so Dino Drone, that was a Flash game. You can probably still play that as a Flash game in case you want to <laughs> not pay for it. Hyperspace Pinball. It's pinball, but different. It's, it's not Space Cadet Pinball, and therefore vastly inferior. Yeah. If it's not it, Space Cadet Pinball, I'm not interested. I assume people know what pinball is, and this is that. This is literally one pinball table, isn't it? Or one one kind of theme of pinball table. There yeah. is a pinball game on Steam that lets you buy a bajillion different themes for it. But okay. Maybe. And it's yeah. still not a space cadet, so... Ooh. But it's set in hyperspace, you know. Well, uh, that's got that going for it. I assume we don't talk about Portaria Upgrade, because I don't have a date listed. Oh, yeah. there, there's a lot of games here, wow. Um, there we are, yeah. We should probably pick up the pace. Okay, you, I'll let you take over. Uh, Drone Zero Gravity is a dark yet strikingly colourful space adventure that will test your patience, which means I, you've already unsold me on it. I don't want my patience to be tested. It appears to be a kind of a 2.5D floating a drone around some caves on an asteroid, probably trying to do some puzzly things, I would have thought. It's not unpretty, but I don't want my patience to be tested. So. It looks exactly like Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet. Oh, is it really? Mm. Okay. It's probably Insanely Twisted Shadow, Shadow Planet, then. Dahlia Sparta! Uh, you play as a soul, uh, assume the role of a family man drawn into Brazil's most bizarre game show as he fights hordes of monsters from Brazilian mythology. Okay. I know precisely zero about Brazilian <laughs> mythology, so that's a new one, yeah. That sounds interesting. You maneuver through fireballs and dodge enemy attacks in a fast-paced combat. That's the, uh, do stuff. I imagine it's probably your uh, generic Native American sort of culture, you know, vaguely I, Inca stuff. That actually no looks pretty cool. Yeah. yeah it cool. looks interesting enough, yeah. Need to learn about a uh, Native, I guess not sort of Native culture thing yeah i know you're thinking native americans and technically i suppose it's an america it's just a different america well i mean well i mean it's well I mean, not everything it's, revolves it's around north america tolkus it is the same sort of culture though that they had i mean it's not the same culture obviously but it's the same sort of thing where you know you're living in tribes or whatever um and other the incans you know they had a, a, an actual empire but i imagine this is based more on the Amazon scattered tribes. Sort of, I, I I don't know. I'm going to. Let's just move on. Orbit is a thing about maneuvering ships at breakneck speed with gravity. Is this a gravity puzzle thing? Again, like everything else this year. Yeah, I think it is. It looks like a gravity puzzle. Geometry wars. I want to say. It, it, it's, it's Gravity Puzzle meets Geometry Wars, I think. Possibly. Which could be interesting, I suppose. Maybe. Or is it multiplayer? Is this a multiplayer thing? It is a multiplayer thing. Ooh. Okay, so it's multiplayer Geometry Wars, as in against each other, not co-op, like fighting other geometries. And it's, yeah, with some gravity mechanics. 
Bizarre. Oh, could be interesting. Cool. Um, we won't touch on the escapist because it's Team 17. Uh, we won't Why do not? Episode because they, they are terrible people and we will boycott them. Aww. Uh, I, I like should... Worms. Worms seems like a cool game. That's sad. Yeah, well, never mind. Let's move on. <laughs> I'm not, well, not going to get into the details, but... There's a story. There is a story, yes. Okay. Uh, the next game that's not early access on Steam would be Oazi. The Other Age Second Encounter. O-A-S-E. Oazi. It's a quirky, bizarre game that incorporates several types of gameplay into a visual novel. It's, it incorporates a dating sim into the visual novel as well, which I would have said were one and the same, but hey. <laughs> so there's puzzle things in there, and there's adventure things in there, and dating sim things in there, and it's all a visual novel, which I'm not sure what to make of that. It doesn't look like a visual novel that is... The, it's not the most visually appealing visual novel I've ever seen. I've seen ones with artwork that made me go, ooh, I quite like this. And then this one just is basic, is what I would describe it as. Maybe. There is absolutely a um, Ace Attorney ripoff in Chittering there as well. Chittering insects appeared without warning. They did? Yeah. No warning. They did not give warning, and they meant to do it. They, they could have at least gone warning, you know, sent a formal de declaration of war to her embassy. I'm not sure what you're talking about here. Is this in one of the screenshots or something? Yeah, insects. War. Trailer. Oh, I was just looking at the screenshots. I didn't, I didn't watch the trailer. Okay, good talk. Jerry McPartlin is the rebel with a cause. We are discovering the secret of Barnet Springs helped Jerry Silver mi mysterious murder before a shifty FBI agent jumps to the wrong conclusion and prove that rock and roll is anything but the devil's music. Maybe you can even help Jerry to impress Luna or at least get the better of Jimmy Lash. This is a point-and-click adventure with an interesting setting that I'm not necessarily convinced I want to explore, but the potential for rock music holds some appeal. I don't know. Like, kind of like a Greece, almost? Yeah. Very big, so either 50s or very Greece vibe. It is, yeah. It's set in the 50s in the USA, is literally what it says in the features. <laughs> and it has two different styles of music, rock and roll. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I can let my kids listen to this. Yeah, I know. The devil's music. <laughs> Kids? You have multiple kids? No, I only have one child. Okay, good. <laughs> well, not good, but okay. Yay, mini will. Uh, Silver Creek Falls Chapter 2 is uh, something that looks like that was made in RPG Maker. I'm pretty certain that was made in <laughs> yeah. RPG Maker. But at the same time, it looks a lot more like... Okay, some of it looks pretty crap, but... Uh, it, look, it looks more like Always Sometimes Monsters than any kind of traditional Final Fantasy knockoff. So... Colour me interested? I haven't played Chapter 1. I'm not, I'm not even aware of the existence of Chapter 1. But, yeah, an FBI agent is brutally murdered in cold blood in his own bedroom. No one knows who, tr who did it or why. One thing is clear, something truly sinister is broiling in Silver Creek. I guess this is probably going to be a mostly narrative kind of thing, because these things kind of tend to be. I will say I'm kind of interested there. Is this mm. for, Hang on. Is this... It is free to play. Oh my god, I'm going to install that. I mean, I'm very intrigued by that. I'm going to install that after this. Yay! It does describe as horror, which is kind of a turn-off, but, yeah. I might be able to get over that for interesting, interesting RPG maker narratives. I like those. I'm not entirely sure how you can do a horror drop-down... I have heard it told that actually RPG Maker horror games are actually quite popular. I think there's actually a thing for RPG Maker horror games. I mean, I... It's a very amateur kind of scene, yeah. but they, it, it definitely exists. Eh? Okay. I'm not sure I could get into that. I guess I mean, this may well be one of those kind of those amateur projects that someone's then just decided, hey, let's go through Steam Greenlights and get it up on Steam. 
that might be what this is. It could well be what this is, but eh, for a free install, I'll have a poke. Uh, ooh, hello, and that's kind of a cool title. Soviet Monsters! Ekranoplans! In, uh, in autumn 2015. Oh, it's autumn. Oh, damn it. I wanted to talk about Ekranoplans, because Ekranoplans are cool. Let's not. But, Letters. you know, we, we have someone who uh, narrowly avoided the, uh, joining the Soviet Union, so we have that. Yay. Yay, Finnish independence movement. Woo! We have what is your opinion on the Soviet oh. Union and its extra plans, a Kenro plans? Yeah, I have no opinions on that. Okay, I talk. I don't think we have time for opinions on the Krano plans, though. Uh, oh. We have time for Jim Power, The Lost Dimension, though, who was originally released in 1993. Well, this is a re-release of some very, very old side-scrolling shootery thingy. There, why are they all? It's always an old side-scrolling shootery thingy. It does not look great. Who made these? I've never heard of these. No, me neither. Here's a... Okay, we have a, a title that piques my interest. Swords and Crossbones, uh. an epic pirate story! Woo! <laughs> pirates! Yeah! Soon to uh, come on the uh, Button Mesh Empire channel. Uh, game of the Year 2015. <laughs> Well, maybe. I have, I have not had good luck with pirate titles. I I am always, always on the lookout for good pirate titles. There are so very, very few of them. You <laughs> assume, like... Roka, you assume that any game could ever beat out Herkuchi's for Mother Nature for your Game of the Year title. I was going to say, this looks like Herkuchi's. Really? You what? Swords and Crossbones and Epic Pirate Story looks like Herkuchi's. It looks like a tactics game to me. <laughs> It, uh, there's yeah. very much a management system in here. Well, there well there was in Chroma Squad, and that was a tactics game, and it was oh, one of the best okay. games of the year. Oh, all right then. So if this is just pirate Chroma Squad, I don't it's know Chroma Squad. Pirate. Actually, Chroma actually, Squad. games have got a yeah. Uh, actually, Chroma Squad would be pretty hard to top for games this year for me. But I I I want to know about pirates. I do want to know about pirates. Uh, that's cool. I'll try and check that out at some stage. Uh, Expand is a meditative video game in which you explore a circular labyrinth which constantly twists, stretches, and expands around you. Which I guess sounds vaguely like... Um, hexagon. hexagon? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Super Hexagon. Uh, it's more sedate than super hexagon I actually know. <laughs> um, if it's meditative, then yeah. I don't think you can meditate to super hexagon. I was going to say, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm watching the trailer. It's... I, yeah, it, it's definitely got a lot of super hexagon inspirations. There's a lot of things flying towards you or away from you or whatever, just around you generally, that you need to react to. And But it's not, it's not the same breakneck, twitch reaction, muscle memory thing that <laughs> super hexagon had going on. Um, yeah, that's a bizarre thing. Very strange thing indeed. Uh, what else we got? What else do we have? We have, uh, let's open up a few tabs. Uh, as Dad, All Stars Dungeons and Diamonds. There's a diamond collecting race. Where quick and strategic thinking and good maze navigation skills are key to outmatch your opponents and emerge victorious. It is literally um. a... Two-player racing around a maze, trying to get out first, I guess. A two-player maze game. So, ab about having fun in games. About that. I think I, I'd, I'd like to have a look at this. this it's got a, stylistically, it looks a lot like Towerfall, but it's also got a lot of references to other indie games. And there's Shovel Knight is in there as a character. There is a pirate character as well, and. I don't know. Yeah, you can like hit traps to mess with the enemy and stuff. It seems like that. Oh well, I, guess. I, don't, I don't know how much how much replayability it has, but I'd be intrigued to take a look at it. Mm. It's only hey. lo on local multiplayer, though. Oh boo! I hate when they do that. It's a PC. Stop doing that, guys. Uh, 
We did that before someone sent us, sent us games and I was like, yes, please send me four copies so I can play with everybody. And it turned out it was a local multiplayer only, so whoops, sorry, people I asked for four keys from. <laughs> I didn't need four keys for that, it turned out. Uh, oh dear. It has pirates though, pirates is all good. But it's mazes, mazes are boring. They don't have to be, they could have pirates in them. <sighs> you know what is boring at this point? Zombies. Possibly even Zombiezoid Zenith. Which is a, quite the name. Yeah, it, is, it is a game about beating up zombies with a baseball bat, apparently. It looks like it's from 10 to 15 years ago. And it's, uh, yeah, about a kid called Arthur who is beating up zombies with a baseball bat to save his girlfriend. Yeah, that looks terrible. It um, kind of does. But also, the, the the first letters here, you probably could pronounce them Z, and I think that's weird. Sorry? Z. You pronounced Z-Z, and I think that's weird. How would you have pronounced it? Z. Oh, what? I thought you meant you would have pronounced zombie differently or something. I was like, <laughs> no, no, no. How else could you even pronounce zombie? Zombie. Well, it's not, you still pronounce the Z the same way. <laughs> no, that, that's... You, you said Z. No, it's, it's, it's Z. It's because it is a Z. It's not Z-Ombie, it's Z-Ombie. Z <laughs> it's Z-Ombie. It's not Z-Ombie. Like, for... Ah, uh, for shame. But you, Yeah, but you also refer to zombies as Zs. Nobody calls them Zs. You're shooting Zs. The only good, the only good Z is a dead Z. Well, I don't call them that. I I have no part in this. Lots of people call do zombies Zeds. Do you call them Zeds, Weirta? No. You see, you see, there we are. Do you have you have you ever heard them referred to as such, Will? I I believe they consider it a derogatory term. Yes. It's you basically see, zombieist. <laughs> I mean, we don't want to offend the zombies, do we? You know, they're they're a valuable minority in our society. <laughs> Anyway, we're we're now running way late on this again, so let's do class. No, let's not do that. Oh, which game? Oh god, which games are available to actually play this week? Not that one. Uh, Blue Kid Two is available this week. That's a game that's available. It is a retro two D style platformer that I've already checked out of watching uh, because it's a retro two D platformer. Yeah. Um, early access. Early access. Early access. Lost Horizon 2 is not early access. This is in the shadow of the Cold War. Fenton Paddock is facing the hardest fight of his life with that while the tensions between superpowers threaten to tear the world apart. A British soldier has to save his family uh, so has been caught by powerful enemies. Yep. You guys enthused? Uh, sorta, maybe? I mean, it... I don't doesn't. think it. I don't think it looks particularly good, but like, I like... It doesn't look bad. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look bad, you know. It doesn't. It doesn't look like that zombie game. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I could see. I, don't know. I could go either way in this. I don't know. I'd have to. I, I, I can't even. Make, even. Well, I've watched the entire trailer now. I can't even make out particularly what we're looking at here. It is by Deep Silver. Deep Silver have done some interesting stuff. So maybe. I don't know. I don't, hard to make out what it is. Anyway, uh, I'm getting through quite a lot of early access titles. I'm just c closing all the tabs because they're all early access. Uh, just stop with the early access, guys. Uh, we have Heroes of Normandy. That's not early access. This is one of the most modern, fun, and engaging board games created in recent years, apparently. Uh, it, it has cutting-edge technology and a ridiculously well-crafted art style and a ton of extra content, so it claims... I'm not convinced about most of the above, but that's I'm, I'm just reading the sales pitch. It is a military-themed strategy board game. It is depicted as a board game. You're, like, rolling dice and moving tokens around a board. It, and maybe it's a, be a beta game? Beta game? Is it beta? The... the, the uh... Uh, the trailer says, "Oh, this game's already in beta." I don't know if this trailer is just a holdover from when it was in beta, or if it's it's still it in beta. Be. Indie devs quite often don't necessarily always update their videos terribly yeah. frequently, yeah, or market much beyond throwing them at YouTubers and hoping something sticks. Yeah, I speak from experience. Someday I too will have an indie dev message me, and that day will be magical. You need to get yourself on some mailing lists. That's how that happens.
I have 59 subscribers. That's not... Uh, you, I'm sure there are people with less subscribers than you that will be pestering indie devs, and I'm sure indie devs would love 59 subscribers to see their games in you know, some instances as but well. But they won't see it. It'd be like five people will see it. There. They don't know that. <laughs> they, they can look at them all. It's obvious. Well, they can they can go go ask for a key for Heroes of Normandy, and you can bring Heroes of Normandy to five people. That, yeah, that would be. Will you watch it, Weirta? Uh maybe. Then it will be worth it. Call in the game. Call in the game is an old school two D platform game. Is this a retro two D platformer? Um, probably not, but it looks really weird. A warrior for freedom in the fight against hordes of socialists. Well, that isn't offensive at all. It has 19 different types of enemies oh, and 12 levels. Oh, there's a balloon that looks like a penis. That, that's pleasant. <laughs> there actually is. That, oh. Yeah, that, that's what that is. Okay. I don't know what we're looking at there. That's so bizarre. Let's not play this game, how about? How about we have a look at Meridian, the Age of Invention, which looks really familiar. You know how we were talking about games that look like Herky Cheese? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. That looks like Herky Cheese, does it not? Well, we love Herky Cheese. We love Herky Cheese, so this is Game of the Year. Yeah, well, I mean, Herky Cheese 4, man, Mother Nature, it, it's coming. It's coming. It is. It's actually, <laughs> I believe it's due out before the end of the year as well. It, it, it's bringing the thunder, man, bringing the thunder. Well, I mean, it's not... The, we, we operate by the Kepler calendar here, man. <laughs> well, the, I'm the sure it'll be out before the end of the Kepler year. is June 5th, 1997. What the new year is only in 1997. There was only one year. Yes, the, the, okay. the day when, when Neil first entered the world, and then the world knew joy. Okay, uh, we've got Lumber Island. That special place is a psychological horror game <gasps> with a teddy bear. Oh, I love the teddy bear. Oh, it's not. Sorry. Uh, oh, it's a, it's a psychedelic first-person horror. Oh, right. It's tagged as psychological, but is described as psychedelic. It's. It reminds me of Weirta's socks. This is a game that Will will probably have to have an opinion on because I have none. I'm, I'm really, really into my first-person horrors at the moment, as you can probably tell. So I, I might just pick this up. Okay. You're going to go have a psychedelic adventure with a teddy bear. Oh, hey, teddy bear. Okay, then you can you can report back on that. Okay, and, and tell us how much it reminds you of Weirta's socks. Like loads. I have no idea what her socks look like. <laughs> they're, oh, they're woolen, and they're colorful, and they're striped. Are they, are they a first-person horror experience? No. Oh. Hopefully not. <laughs> well, probably no resemblance then. Yeah. Uh, where are we at? Where are we up to? We have Black and White Bushido is an arena fighting game between light and shadow samurai. Samurai flavor of the day, I suppose. Kind of interesting, because it's... The maps are kind of segre segregated into black and white, but the characters are black and white, so the white one you can't see in the light, and the black one you can't see in the shadow. That's kind of interesting. Is that how that works? Because... Oh, okay. There's, I mean, I'm, there's some of the screenshots, there's like the black characters in the shadow, but you can still see them, oh. they're just grey. Might just be my, my resolution, uh, my, my screen. Maybe. I don't know. That would be an interesting mechanic, though, if you do like, multiplayer. visible in certain things. Yeah. Local it's multiplayer. Also, it's also only long, local multiplayer, yeah. So, if you want to play that online... Uh, Luna Sky is a high-speed, high-precision platformer starring Luna. She wakes up, Luna has no idea where she is, and when she is alone except for... help her discover the strange world. This is... a platformer. The screenshots are not selling me on it. Terribly. It is a... It's described as a Metroidvania title, actually. Um... I don't know. I have no strong feelings for this game one way or another, actually. No. I'm, like, entirely neutral on that bit one. noisy. I can't really tell what's what, what's interactable, and what's background. Yeah. Oh, well, we have Pixel Galaxy, which is a non-shooting shooter up where you must grow, make friends, and survive together. What? Okay. 
Friendship, I yay! Consider me intrigued by the concept. It doesn't look very friendly. It doesn't look like it's a making friends kind of deal. But, but I'm intrigued friends. by how that works, because the trailer's not helping me figure out how that works in the slightest. I think you, like, collect, like, things that shoot for you, and they can die, and as long as you don't die, you can keep collecting more things, and they, you can kind of end up with a big glob of stuff that keeps shooting, and bits of that will get break off if you get hit, but that could be interesting, actually, yeah. Looks kind of trippy. Yeah, uh, well, there's a lot of these games actually kind of do, yeah, the, your shmups often go down the trippy route. I'm kind of okay with that. Not everyone will be, but I, I don't mind trippy shooters. Uh, Polychromatic is a physics-based arcade shooter with a pop of colour, which is less trippy than the last. It is more... simple, visually. More minimalist, I guess. It looks like a Geometry Wars kind of thing, though. That's pretty much what that looks like. Yep, that's all I got on that. Uh, Hilux is a recreational program with light JRPG elements. What does that even mean? Do those words make it's sense? Recreational, like all video games. One would have thought so. Yeah. That I'm not sure what this is. It's, what is this? I don't know. It's surreal and slightly disturbing. And it's just, yeah, surreal. And it's kind of got a, a kind of a comic booky kind of look to it. I don't even know <laughs> what that is. I haven't got a clue. Uh, Anode. Oh, let's look at Anode. Anode is a, it reintroduces the classic falling block puzzle genre with new twists and challenges. You link blocks back and forth across each other, um, match angled couplers to create chains and multiples of colors, play mission mode and complete randomly generated objects for more challenges. It's a, it's a, it's a connect the things puzzle game. Uh, mechanically, it looks not dissimilar to, what was it, Ironcast. I imagine there are probably other games that have used similar kind of mechanics, to be fair. It's not quite ma not quite match three, but it's somewhere in the match three and Tetris kind of area of things. That could be entertaining. I don't mind those kind of mechanics. They're kind of fun. And was that even out? Is that even out this week? Uh, actually, no, it could be out any time this month. That doesn't have a date on it, but that brings us to the end. Yeah, and boo. I think all things considered, probably in this exactly the same time frame as last week. We still ran along. Uh, we, need, we need to get better at filtering out the guff in the games, I think. Uh, so, and people tell us about the things. Uh, Vita, do you have anything you want to promote or tell people about or shout out? Because you don't do the YouTubes particularly. I, I, well, Tulk has mentioned you had a channel that with a thing on, but I don't know if you want to promote it. So promote whatever you want to promote. Well, I can promote my Twitter, but yeah, I'm not very okay. active on YouTube. So twitter.com forward slash Sarah Esker. S-A-R-A-H-E-S-K-E-R. -E okay, cool. All right. Thanks for that. Talk us. Tell the people about And if things. you want to be a dirty cheater like me and can find your soul to burn forever in the fires of your insides, then you go to youtube.com slash weirdabitamuntaya and look at the thing that is there. And if Nobody you want has any clue to how to spell that from that. Well, if you want to see... Um, how to spell it, then go to the uh, the comments of any Button Mash podcast episode ever. Uh, well, not really, but sort of. I don't know. I don't know. Bleh. Just, just have... You, I don't... Man. Man. Uh, V-I-R-T-A-M-I-T-T-A-M-U-U-N-T-A-J-A. -T -T -A -A, something like that. Cool. Okay. Tell and them what you do. I am Talk of the Valiant. YouTube.com slash Talk of the Valiant. And... I do, I do like two Geo Guessers a week and two Town of Salem's a week, and I do one uh, Strange Lands a week, or well, sort of, and that's basically it. But so right now I have UHC going on, which is apparently massive lag spikiness, but it's there, I guess. Um, good talk. 
Good talk indeed. Well, well what do you... Well, well, you shout me out then, Maroka. Uh, Tolkas is better than Trump. You should go watch him if you want to see Hearthstone things. <laughs> Uh, yeah, although I will say that uh, Trump and uh, Mroka share one thing. Do you know what that is? Letters in common in the name? They are both listed as uh, featured channels in the sidebar of the Talks of Valiant channel. Cool. I would also suspect we are also verified on YouTube. Yeah. I presume Trump is. I, I, yeah. It seems likely he uh, Trump. Be. Trump doesn't actually do any of his YouTube himself. He actually uh, pays an editor a salary to worry about his YouTube for him, and he just does streaming. In fact, actually, tell you what, Trump is not verified on YouTube. I got something over Trump there. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Woo! But much verified Trump isn't. Woo! I'm Suck it, Trump. <laughs> and also, you're the only person in this group to be verified on YouTube, I believe, so... Who? Uh, surprise! If you uh, if you're talking about strange lands in general, no, I was talking about us, the four of us. How about us? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I imagine Blitz should be if he's not. I don't know. Well, that that does seem like the sort of thing that Blitz would be on. The, the work but, ethic on that guy, man. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's uh, wrap things up. Let's uh, tell people. Do we want? Do we want to bother with the button mash things, or are we are we out of time? Ah, we, people know where to look. Yeah, we, we, uh, we I will. Links. I will say. I will say thank you to everybody who came out to the event because that was freaking awesome. Saturday was an absolute blast. Thank you to anybody who might be listening who attended that. That was fantastic, and everybody who came made it fantastic. So thanks. I love you. We'll do it again in a few months' time. Don't know when, but we'll. Yep, yeah, follow us on the Facebooks. Facebook.com forward slash button mash, and you'll find out. We're to final words on your thoughts. Warm. Good. I oh. think we're done. Are we, are we done? Um, bye, 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 people. Bye. Bye. Very bye. Au revoir. Adios. Yay. <laughs>